Figured it out. <clears throat> can do some for the collab later. I need. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Ninja. <coughs> <coughs> Hi, today, Ninja. Hope your day's been well spent. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, where did I put the fry? Other thing of orange juice. I'm doing good. He's been cooking. Did you have any plans for today, Nana? Huh? Anything? Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice to just have a rest day. I have a still trying to paint. See, hope you're successful in your evening papers. Mm. No, it's like oh, basic.
It's quite a awesome. need to get more storage at some point. Yeah, I do. You know what? I could just buy more right now. Oh, I think I need some more. Ooh, I need more. Take so much. <laughs> Um, oh, I need oil. Can't. I'm running such a successful store. Is there space for one? Uh huh. Ew. Is that lag? Next.
Okay. I see these are numbers that I like to see. 100 and more. You spend less than 100, you're not welcome in my store anymore. Mm -mm. Imagine coming to a supermarket and not spending your entire life savings. Like, what do you think this place is? Oops. Oh my god. Oh, y'all go home already. I want to close up. Fifty-six. You just spend more. You also need to spend more. Excuse me. Bank phone seven thousand. Why? Why would you come here when there's literally somebody right over there? Okay, we're at You're welcome back to my store. Thank you. Uh, so oh my god, that is ah, I'm literally making no profit these days. This Oh my gosh, brown shirt. Oh, I say any toilet issues. Much more. You can buy like two more doors. See, right? Chips, coffee. Oh, and chips. I can't believe I almost forgot the chips. I'm out of the big stuff. What else do I need? I'm homeless. Mm -hmm. Stash, water, and soup. 
Did you open the app for the- I did not because, again, I'm in PNG form, so there's no need. Mm, right, because my, my PNG form does not- that is practically impossible. <laughs> so, there was no point in opening it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Now, if anybody knows a way where um, I can essentially have my PNG head padded, that'd be great to know. Yeah, and I think I'll be in PNG form all day today. Alright, what else do I need? Uno. And butter. Oh, uh, here. Blonde I think we're ready to open. Yeah. Yeah, it would be cute, but like I said, it's a PNG, not like a chibi model. Hmm. Maybe I can discuss it with you. Probably not, but I'm pretty sure.
do want to get a chibi model. But I think I want to wait till like I get my. Before I get a chibi model. And then I do actually have somebody in mind that would want to do my chibi model. I would actually have them. She does her own before I do like consideration. Then I know she said she was working on it while on her stream. I, I think she But the thing is that she only does like the design. Like I think I think basically ready to rake in that part and which means I'd have to find somebody to rake for me. Hey, damn, thanks a lot. Is it okay? We're about to put salt in his coffee. These people are paying like absolutely nothing. Yeah, I don't really know a lot. Really, because I don't, I don't think my Palma separate. A separate thing for just rigging. I mean, I could ask, but I doubt it. I'm tired of these people come in by like absolutely not. Like, excuse me, I'm trying to make a profit here. Are you working better than your workers? Of course. And that's why I have over $7,000. They get paid 80 a day. The unfortunate part is that I do need them because I because the checkout would be full like literally every every day. I only have like one checkout. I'd fire you both if I didn't need you. Bro. You get out of my goddamn store. I don't want to see your face ever again. Mm. 
Imagine super supermarker. Super. Oh, imagine if they let you play with your friends. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> like it'll obviously be absolute chaos. Cause they'd probably like <clears throat> double everything since it's like two people compared to one. I'm really hoping for um, I'm more than ready to start fussing at my friends for not doing their job when I'm not even doing my own. <laughs> oh, we're out of so much bread. Yeah, you need some extra two hands. I do. Be like, and pick one. Either you're on restocking or cashier duty. Looking <laughs> pad. Why is it so dark in the store? Did you not pay the light bill? Oh no, I just don't use lights. Period. It saves on the electricity. But yeah, speaking of, super I mean, it, it auto pays, but it just makes more sense to, you know, get it over. But yeah, I, I just don't use light. You gotta save on the bills. <laughs> but nobody really seems to care anyway, so we Gucci. Girl, how are you gonna spend eighty one in my store? Get out! I don't want to face ever again. Disgusting. Oh, also, hi Siren, welcome to the stream. <laughs> no, you need to pay the light bills. Well, I do have to pay the electricity bill regardless because I have um the freezer and the refrigerators, so I'm gonna be paying the bill for electricity regardless. I'm rich. Let's see, beer, salmon, so everything. What do I need? Nice chicken. How much? All the cheese. Calm. Okay. Uh, let's we need 12 eggs, cola, two, uh, four. No, I could just use so I can get and then apple juice. Mm -hmm. I need salmon. Musca. Uh, like, how are you doing, Siren? How you doing? In a hot minute, hasn't it? Uh, oil, salt.
still the end? Oh, oh, oh. Mm -hmm. Supposed to they be long break a day? <laughs> oh my god, so many people are sleepy today. <laughs> I'm doing all right, though. Oh, with Kate. Just, you know, uh, wasting time or, or filling time before the collab later. Ooh, I need the flower. Our cereal. Cereal. Oh, noise. Yes. Not bleach. Yes, welcome to my 2000 store. <laughs> yes, that's what this is, which is why 2000s music playing. It's meant to throw you back in time. You're shopping with your parents. Red. Oh my god, not the animal sounds again. D don't mind them, Siren. Please don't. I, I don't know what's gotten into them. Coffee, sugar. Looks like I can get water too. Why you hating? I'm not hating. I'm just saying. <laughs> Don't bring others into your little animal fest that you're having. Okay. We're we're trying to keep people in the stream. That's in the low way. <laughs> Oh, please don't scare Siren. <laughs> no, you just hate all my animals. <laughs> I'm not with. Because the more people who stay in the stream, the more likely they're going to be participating with you and your animal sounds once they get comfortable. <laughs> See, you got, you got to think the long game, <laughs> Ninja. Think the long game. Is and what how is scaring them? Because they're gonna think that everybody in here is like a furry. Right. 
Okay, some people don't vibe with that. No, no, I don't want it for furry. Well, how are they supposed to know that? They don't know you. This is why you have to be careful with what you show people. Yeah, I can tell you never thought about it before. <laughs> Appearance is everything. It was like first impressions. You plead the fifth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, red. So many packages. I'm evaporating. Put them. Put the bread. Where did I put them? Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of rocks, but Blood or sharp.
No, I guess it is about time. Enjoy your dark siren. I'll miss you. Honey, you could have spent like 10 minutes. the numbers we like to see uh spin seventy back lower It's so little. I'm trying to get rich.
Only if I need to break 10k. Will today be the day? Bill? Oh my god, I finally found Bill. <laughs> are you are you kidding me? Get out of my face. I don't want to ever see you again. Uh, thank you so much. Bro, why do you need two things at <laughs> But bro? I get very concerned when people buy like two cakes or like several bottles of vodka. Good. Is is home life okay? Some people are broke, okay, but I'm not even talking about that, right? I'm talking about the people who buy a whole lot of alcohol. <laughs> like, y'all good? Hmm. I should probably in inform people in the Discord. Maybe they got the news. I don't know. No, my does What if it's not Sony for his birthday? Okay, but you don't need all that alcohol. <laughs> like, you're missing the point, Ninja. Yes, I am. <laughs> Better things to do. Sounds like a personal problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do the stuff on the other first. Still in peace. 
Hi, Jonah. I'm changing the price for profit, y'all. Honestly, if I could just like supercharge, I would. I can't, so. <laughs> Okay, bye, John. Mm-hmm. 
So many boxes. Okay, what's the to do? Yeah, so much work. Ending into a supermarket Saturday. Hi, Nacho. How are your studies going? your assignment. Okay. Enjoy your break. I'm just telling customers to get out of my store and never come back if they spend less than a hundred.
Breathe. Oh, a plant. It's really greener. Warm and wet. And then the wet. In, in June. Oh, the hip butter. Building. Pew? What are we pewing? I'm crash fierce. <laughs> but yes, welcome to my thousand store. Do you see this? He really came in here for this. And I'll watch, watch his ass is gonna pay with a card. He really just came in for the, just that. Get out of my goddamn store. I know if I can't now. I never said you could in, just Oh my god. I'd be too busy jamming to the music to <laughs> pay these people their change. <laughs> Oh god, my blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Daisy looks pink. Represent. Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Girls. <laughs> Oops. Mm -mm. Y'all ever go shopping with the oh, maybe not Naja, because I mean it's me. But like everybody else is like Why now? Look, my kid, you're a shy. Um, what's he spend my twenty? Hmm. Rest of all in a forecast. 
<laughs> it's still in me. Yeah. I can't. You got to do it just like her. Now. <laughs> Inside of it, free little stuff, not four wheel drive. <laughs> it's leather seat. We are strong in all four tires. That's good. Cheats. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I tried my best. Look, my kids do this. You would take myself seriously. Left on in the far tires. But yeah, I, I can't sing too seriously because we do have to do <clears throat> a car fragment in like half an hour. Where is Tones? <laughs> I was expecting Maple to be late and not Tones. Where is he? I'm gonna go find him. Gimme yo, gimme yo, gimme yo. Wait, y'all ever seen like that clip where it's like just him constantly saying gimme yo on repeat? <laughs> it's such a jazz beat. Oh, oh, so fun. Oh, oh, oh. In my mind. Treasure. is what you are. You're the only star. A wish come true. If you let me treasure you. Oh, 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 oh. Watch, don't say he's been here the entire time. Yeah, we, we really haven't seen him type. Because <laughs> for the, for like, the beginning part of my stream, it was just, it just said like one viewer, and then Ninja came in, it's only been like two. Yeah, you know, he hasn't been here. He, he would have said something by now. Are they done? They are. We're out of potatoes. What? Okay, guys. Since the two of you are here, do you want to chat until Tone shows up? Or. Do you want to continue um, watching supermarkets? I'm fine with either, which is why I'm asking. I know you are a ninja. I was asking the two people who are going to be voicing with me. Oh. 
ver. Por aquí. Ok. Okay, okay, I have two conflicting things. Okay, what, what do you guys want? Do you, do you want more supermarket sim or do you want us three to yell and talk? Come on now, you gotta help me out here. Okay, thank you, thank you, because <laughs> y'all both said conflicting things, I'm like, okay, you, you can't do this to me. <laughs> so, uh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Tones, can you answer that question for me? Now I'm the only person responding to me. Then I'm ready whenever. Also, then they don't answer. I don't worry. I can't hear it. Maple, dear, I can't hear you over the music. I, I know it probably sounds like I'm talking to myself right now. <laughs> I'm just trying to put all these away. Then we can do our thing. Oh, look who decided to join us. Bones.
I swear if you say you just woke up. So many packages. I don't think we'll get through all of them. Wait. What are you guys? Tones, you know what? Why, why don't you why don't you step out and come back when you're awake? <laughs> Uh, right, very convincing. Are you sure you're awake enough tones? Don't lie. I, I am. Mm-hmm. Ninja, you're not gonna be the one reading. <laughs> oh. Everybody looked. Everybody looked. Quiet. Sorry, I'm still setting up some things. Oh. I got a new audio thing that hopefully fixes all my issues in my life. So. Uh, the new audio thing that fixes but... all your issues? What is that? Well, like, before, every once in a while, it'll just, like, really distort my voice for some for no reason. So I'm trying to fix that. Does anybody want to be a mod today and, you know, change my information? I'm just the intern, so... He's awake enough to do that. <laughs> Silence. I'm always awake. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Maybe. Just a little bit. Getting there. The hell is that? Oh, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> Here we go. Wait, Maple, you gave yourself a full body. I gave what a full body? What? Your soul. Your fushi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> what did you think I meant? I don't know. <laughs> did you not see her fugi for a while? Well, for a while it was just my Discord icon, and then I changed it to, to just this. Oh, that was Does everybody remember their roles? Maybe. No, um, please say you do. No. <laughs> I do, I do. I have it written down. Okay, guys, you can literally just go look in the, in the chat. Yes. Refresh your memory. Yeah, but I mean, I got goldfish memory. Didn't Tom say he wanted to do, like, the girl? Yeah, a lot of people got flipped around. What do you mean I a lot of people? I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a title here. Oh my god. Oh, which one is it? 
last time we did was was January, guys. <laughs> guys. <laughs> Three months ago. Oh shit! No, wait, huh? Uh, math? No, two. You good? You good? <laughs> no. Well, te technically, technically, because it's almost technically because the fourteenth of January. What? Yeah, what, that's two months we... ago, bro. What? Oh fuck! <laughs> oh, no, no. He's not <laughs> awake. He's not awake. Let me just make sure everything's oh no. Bro said this is a weird looking Dark Souls game. <laughs> what do you wait what? Oh wait, hold up. Dark Souls, yeah. I agree. There's not very much rolling in this one, looks like. <laughs> Yo, where's my, uh, where's my campfire? <laughs> uh, okay. Still thinking of a stream. Yes. People, you got any ideas? Since well, you're interning and technically assumed. not just on leave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the best I can come up with. Close the store to read. <laughs> to read. <laughs> People, please tell me you got something better. Um, of course I do. That doesn't sound very confident. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> Move down. <clears throat> Okay, if you guys can't come up with anything, I do it myself. <laughs> I I got something. I got something. Okay, let's see it. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> the silence speaks a lot. I mean, I like it better, though. It, it sounds better. All right, let's start. Jones, are you with us? Yep. That was a very strange <laughs> pause. <laughs> it's not very reassuring. I was getting water and I rushed back. Mm -mm -mm. Right, right. My screen, you guys. What do we, uh. That would help. Do yeah, we, uh, that would be helpful. Damn, all of y'all getting on me like that would be helpful. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys all set up. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. What's what's the what's the recap of the story? We're we're calling someone. You can give the recap of the story. What? No. no. <laughs> okay, then no recap. <laughs> wow. I ain't okay. gonna sit here and no recap. <laughs> Uh, all right, let me. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Still log. I feel like we read this. I didn't save it, did I? The idiot.
Oh. I forgot which one I did. I think we're panicking and we're waiting for someone to like call us or respond to us or something. No answer. I've got to be overthinking things. What's wrong with me lately? I never used to get so worked up <laughs> just by not hearing back from Shannon quick enough. That's supposed to be her job. I just so used to seeing her at school <clears throat> that it didn't even occur to me until now how lonely I get without her. God, I'm such a baby. And anybody can. Okay, you know what? Naja, you do it. Time passes slowly. Even Lana finishes the stream and makes supper. Your phone has received no new alerts. Should have heard from her by now. Her of it. Did her wound get worse? It was a pretty deep cut. If it got infected, contact me when you're able to. I see you. Uh, everything going on lately has me totally on edge. B. Clive have heard from her? And Clive, get ready. Hey Clive, have you heard from Shannon today? Clive? Good. There's really not over your rooms. Uh. Tones, that's you. Okay, I'm Clive. Bro. <laughs> He's none not here. Remember our roles. No, none of us remember our fucking roles. You literally could have scrolled up the jet guys. Why the heck are you asking me? Okay, okay. Literally refresh k maple are you her yep. best friend jasper naja five tones lana tones natalia naja and then shannon maple narrator is whoever doesn't have lines and i'm doing the extras in the got it what do we got uh -huh. uh... okay <laughs> <laughs> one, one more time. Guys, we're not supposed to be scuffed. <laughs> Sorry, just checking. No, it's fine. I don't mind. I haven't heard from her, but if you do, I'll let you know. Thanks. Alright, one more thing. Lana said you left something here after supper. Well, thank God. The walkie talkie. The walk it lacky, yes. Don't be fun of me. <laughs> I'll come pick it up tomorrow, okay? Sleep time. An actual conversation. N not yet. I wasn't sure if I was going to be narrative. Okay, at least it's not going to grab it now. You can't man and are running with Clive and when you're already this, this tired from worrying. Oh well, maybe I'll catch up on a few more episodes of Princess Robin before bed. We can start the next season when she visits again. Times three if you want to de-stress. What are you watching? This is. Yes, I am. I know this show, Princess Sparrow. Princess Robin. That's it. I get a ton of buzz online every time a new episode is released. I had no idea you'd be into it, though. 
It's more for Shannon's list. sake than my own. She's a super fan. From what I gathered yesterday, I totally get that vibe. I was shocked when I saw her leaving the house so early this morning. An early bird, huh? Usually she's the opposite. She must be really worried about her attendance. It was nice meeting her. So, are you gonna make, me, make some room on that couch for what? You want to watch Princess Robin? Yeah, why not? I've always wondered what all the hype is about. Alright, but I'll warn you. I'm on the season one finale already. She plops down on the couch beside you with a to-go cup, coffee in hand. You recognize the logo on it from your visit with Charlie. You unpause the episode and let the brightly colored swirl of magic resume its course across the TV screen. Oh yeah, didn't we didn't we read all this before? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, we did. I remember that. Oh, what happened here? Hold on. Uh, uh, uh I think it leaves off on a cliffhanger. It's like about time travel. Yeah, because I'm like I I could have swore we 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 had tones doing some <laughs> villain ass voice. <laughs> nice skeletor. Oh, right, right. Yeah, they feel so bad. No, no, go ahead, Naja. With the kind of exhaustion that hits you out of nowhere like a pile of bricks, you trudge up to your bedroom. Um, do you think we read this too? Does she have a dream? Uh, Shannon, I haven't heard from you yet. That's what we're done. I feel like I did. Uh, you're safe right now, aren't you? I feel like, yes, we did. Wait, hold on. Am I just hard of hearing? I guess I am. Yeah, I'll come over to that. I think we stopped here, maybe? I can't remember. <laughs> I know, I know you guys can't. Um, <laughs> go ahead, I'll just... <laughs> This place looks familiar, warm, different, but surely the same nature trail that you saw while wandering Paraphon. The musical sound accompanying your movements almost feels like it's leading you somewhere. You listen carefully, desperate for a clue about where to go. A magnetic pulls you further into the trail and noticeably closer to Shannon's Christ. A little daylight there was vanished, only the tune a rusted old ringing and Shannon screaming for your help. Guided off the path by what seems to be instinct, you find yourself at an old abandoned shack. No, not abandoned. You can make out the silhouettes of several people, some sort of gathering in the middle of the forest. No idea who that is. Um, would you like a cup of tea? Voices. He only heard a few short words out of his mouth, but you already have it memorized. Alright, well, whoever Jasper is, you got some lines. I need your help with something. What's going on? It's a bold pity. Mm, my head feels like it's about to explode. The music has faded back to ringing. Louder. 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 
I'm so sorry. I never wanted this to happen. I only ever wanted for you to be happy. You jolt away painting, panting, after you manage to catch your breath. You groan at the realization of a headache pounding through your skull already. A ringing in your ears accompanies it, preserved from the nightmare's horrible sounds. I... I did just have one peaceful night. The intensity of your recent nightmares leaves you shaking in fear. Come on, relax. It's another dream. I'm used to this by now. You should be used to it, at least. But instead, abandoning the sense of I need to be strong that you held on to until now, you grab the plushie from beside the bed and cling to it. Why does this stupid stuffed animal make me feel safe? A dumb child. But an image flashes through your mind. The happy day you spent with Shannon before everything went to shit and her smiling face as she held her own stuffed animal. You relax at the thought. After you calm yourself down more fully, you drag yourself out of bed and downstairs to the living room. Lana must have already left work, probably hours ago. Only a digital feeling. You check your phone for the tenth time since waking up this morning. Still nothing. Are your dreams really just meaningless nonsense? Or was that a cry for help? You're not ready to accept that just yet, because if it's true, then your change from the state K was in during your nightmares is probably... No, no, don't think. The guilt weighs on your shoulders even if you look over your schoolwork. Jasper's voice from your nightmares keeps repeating in your head. Maybe you wouldn't be quite so worried if it wasn't for Kay's disappearance. Where is he right now? You never wanted Shannon to get involved in any of this. Without her, you feel like a piece of that's you is missing. Your cheeky smile flashes in your mind and you groan. Stop it. Don't think. Don't think about any of it. Just leave the nightmares where they belong, in your sleep, and focus on reality. For your own sanity. The phone's beeps is enough to send you almost leaping out of your seat to grab it. Hello? Oh. Uh. Peace. Don't sound too excited to hear from me. I'm going to be coming to get the walkie-talkie now. Mm. Oh. Um, are you still waiting to hear from Shannon? Yep. Any chance she texted you? No. If she texts anyone, it'd be you, obviously. Great, this wasn't exactly how you hoped to spend your day. You decide fresh air might help you get right above... Oh, about way to cloud outside <laughs> of the porch. The wind feels chilly today. You wrap a blanket around yourself for protection from the cold. Eddie! Uh, what's with the blanket? I'm cold. Uh. But it's super warm right now. Sure, if you're wrapped up in a bulky hoodie. Uh. Um. Clive scares That's... over a bit. No, I don't like you. Never mind. <laughs> Let's go so a bit closer. His quick movements are a complete opposite of Charlie's. 
as I support steps of debating whether I should sit next to you. In the end, though, he upsells sits on the grass from the bottom of the stairs. What's wrong? You look worried. Your pants are going to get dirty if you sit down there. I doubt my clothes are what you're worried about. So weird. You manage a weak smile, but it feels heavy and falls back into a frown. Your eyes have all cloud and his curious expression staring down on the empty street. Don't you have anything more important to do? Not really. Man, you must have a really boring life then. Shut up. I mean, I mean, like trying to cheer you up should be more important than something else, right? Since we're friends. Your eyes shoot towards him in surprise. Really said it that bluntly? I guess we're you're friends, right. right? We're friends, huh? But well, you're not going to tell me what's wrong, are you? Is it about Shannon? You never give up, do you? Fine, sorry. If that's how it's going to be, then how about we hang out? It might cheer you up. What? <laughs> okay, I'm not actually. Ask him. Let's see. You better see. Mm. Grew up in uh, Marathon, right? Do you know the nature trail well? Uh, yeah. I like to jog out there. Go off the path. Are there any spots to camp? A cabin or something? Uh, uh, no. Why do you ask? Just curious. Wait, did you want to go there with me? Is that it? I don't mind taking you. And that isn't exactly what I... You pause. Sure, it's not what you intended, but maybe this could work in your favor. Visiting the nature trail with Clive, huh? I guess there wouldn't be a bad way to kill time. Hey, oh, I might be back and might not be back until late tonight. Don't stay up waiting for me! Thanks for letting me know. What's going on, though? Yeah, work stuff. You know the drill. You don't usually have night shifts. Tell me about it. I'd rather do anything else. But no! I'm stuck here! <laughs> I'm gonna go with the five, but I'm sure I'll be back before you do. No worries. Uh... Uh, sorry. Yes, a date, of course. You're an adult now. How can I forget? No way. He's just doing it to cheer me up. Cheer you up? Oh, you haven't heard from Shannon yet. No, not yet. Hey, don't be too grim about it. Everything will be fine. You said her finals are coming up. I'm sure she's just busy studying. You have a point. I'm sure you're right. Try to relax and enjoy your time with Clive. I'll see you this evening. Tell you all about it. hell work. <laughs> it takes a bit of an effort for you to go through your protective layer of blanket wrapped around you. But by the time you put back inside and grab your phone, you realize Clyde was right. It is quite warm out today. 
The cold quickly dissipates now that you have a distraction. You led lively the way down the street. At first you found the emptiness of Paraphon disconcerting, but perhaps it's starting to grow on you. Passing by a local hotspots and running into almost no one is relaxing in its own way. Much uh -huh. better than passing by noisy playgrounds full of children squealing and hearing the screech of cars driven by people who clearly don't care about uh volume control. Oh, welcome readers, welcome! Oh, and how the hell did I get a hype tree? <laughs> welcome, welcome! My name is Ekrivan, I am the story-loving Chilin. Um, I mostly do reading content and RPGs. And as you can see right now, we are reading a visual novel together. Visual novel? Visual novel together. <laughs> <laughs> And so, if you guys need to go get some rest, get some food, or anything like that, go ahead. And if not, I hope you enjoy our and terrible reading. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hi, Hachimi, hi! It's been quite some time. How was Valorant? In your win. But how the hell did we get a hype dream? <laughs> <laughs> the hype. Oh, it was bad. Bad? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Were you winning, son? I, I don't think so. If, if Hachimi said bad. <sighs> Alright. Well, if you need to relax, this is the stream for you. <laughs> We're reading. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you finish, Aja? Yeah, I finished. Okay, just making sure. Oh, if there's also an ad break. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Great hype train. The hype train is awesome. <laughs> Wonderful hype train. All right. Oh. Let's be like, we'll continue after the end. Oh my god, I can't English. What's English? I don't know. I know, I know, I know Spanglish. Spanglish. Bro, bro says I know Spanglish. Oh, you know what? They could probably read the closed caption. <laughs> then they can't hear our beautiful voices. Okay, but like, no, I meant like while we're just sitting here talking, while it had like ends. Are you guys excited? Reach the end. Huh? Is the end coming up? <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Maple, you've been quiet this whole time. Meek child. I am speaking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that you haven't um, gotten any lines. No, it's okay. <laughs> really, they'll be coming soon. Okay. I hope. <laughs> we're, gonna find, we're gonna find out that Shannon's boyfriend is an asshole. And she's gonna have all the lines. What? Shannon's boyfriend an asshole? Impossible. All the, si all the signs are there. <laughs> Ick. I'm just messing with you, obviously. Damn. You're saying he's not a dick. What? You're saying he's not a dick. I was I mean, wrong. He might be. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth. Back and forth. Damn. I'm sad. This hype train is gonna go to waste. You, how do you add to the hype train? Oh. What? Oh, with bits. Yeah. You... I, I feel bad when, like... Wait, what? What am I saying? I'm really about to sit here and act like I get hype trains every day. Okay. Okay, so what does this do? 
Oh, the ads almost over. <laughs> Two, one. Happy birthday! Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't know how bits work, but I sent the hundred. Wow. You yeah, don't I don't know how they work either. What do you mean you don't know how they work? I, I don't. I don't. What you think? I know how bits work. You think I get bits? Also, welcome, welcome back from the ad, everybody. Well, let's continue, guys. Um. Oh, right. Go ahead, Naja. Your turn. A sale of hesitance in your throat at the pavement turns to a gravel foot footpath leading down downhill towards the trail. You swallow swallow it away, both your own sake and for Shannon's. Shannon, you need to figure out this mystery, and for yourself. Red not turn into a carbon copy of suspicion and paranoia like your father. When you check your phone another 10 or maybe closer to 20 times on the way there before stuffing it back into your pocket. This might have been a good choice after all. Have this bump itch some places, keeping your mind on the scenery in front of you instead of dwelling on the on the fair. It's really pretty here. Small black birds flit between the trees, whistling to each other. It feels like it's been forever since you last took your time to listen to nature instead of, well, instead of your own intrusive thoughts. I guess you don't get out often. Is that an insult? Yes. You know what I mean? Shut well, up. <laughs> oh, yes. It seems like you only go to places when someone else is involved. I guess you're right. <laughs> I guess it's hard to feel safe anywhere after what happened in the city. Worlds tumble out and you wish you, you could stuff them back inside. Come on, don't get so personal. That must not be uh, good for your health. No, probably not. You jog out here? Yep, when you feel better, maybe we could... Uh... Jog together? Maybe. You feel his eyes on you, taking in your expression as best as you can without making any direct eye contact. It must be exhausting to be uh, afraid, as if you can't trust many people, right? Exhausting is a good word for it. Well, like a dark, eerie cloud looming constantly over your head. I'm surprised Clyde was insightful enough to realize it. Sheesh. You started to feel sorry for the poor guy. He did not sign up to be a therapist today. I love doom and gloom. It seems like there's a lot of different paths around here. Question casually, trying to figure out just how long it'll take you to search every inch of it for a place in your dream. A lot, but the way we're going right now, it's going to take us to the river. Why there? Ugh. There was no river in your dream. Would it be rude to separate from him right then and there and search alone? Have you heard the stories? I haven't. At least people say it's only a story. I beg to differ. A long time ago, there was a young okay. boy walking. He huh? saw a monster out there in the river. She was beautiful, disguised as the boy's greatest desire. They lured him into the water, took his soul, and they never found the body. Legend says that the boy is still out there somewhere, trying to escape his fate. Scary stories, huh? Wasn't expecting that. I basically, run away if I see my greatest desire. Like a free therapist swimming out in the river. I mean, look, if it's a free therapist, I think I'm a little strong there. <laughs> <laughs> yep, unless you want the monster to steal your soul and deposit your body in another dimension. <laughs> Uh, 
You continue to chit chat with Clive. You make your way through the trail. A couple more glances at your phone reveal that there's still no response from Shannon. I think your story is just that. Sorry. None of my greatest desires are in sight. What would those greatest desires be exactly? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a chance and guess a text message from San from Shannon to be on the list right now. Is it that obvious where my mind is? Hard not to notice you checking your phone every chance you get. Sorry, that is right. I gotta relax. She tries her best to help. She thinks I'm lonely. Are you lonely? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to question around in your head a bit, but nervous about admitting it aloud. After a bit, you shrug. Yeah, I get it. Oops, I didn't mean to skip so fast. Sorry. <laughs> I guess Lana would be happy to hear we found some common ground. Maybe we have more in common than just. You know, haven't had the chance to figure it out yet. Like what? Uh, what's your favorite season? Autumn, I guess. Right before it gets too cold to go outside without a winter jacket. Me too. I, I used to like summer the best. So did I, back when I was a kid. Yeah, same. Shannon loves summer. The bright sky, the beach, the warmth of the sun. You'd probably love hearing her stupid horror stories while exploring this trail. Sorry, I just... I keep seeing her in everything lately. I guess I've been so used to having her around that I didn't realize how much I'd miss her until she was gone. <laughs> One of her favorite things to do when she first got her driver's license to go barreling down open roads at sunset with all the windows down. I hated the stupid wind blowing in my face and complained the whole time, telling her to slow down. She's a good driver. I'm careful even when she's going fast. She's... You can't throw yourself off with a nervous laugh, realize how stupid they must sound to him. Never mind. Uh Keep going. I think I'd like to try doing something like that. Maybe. Clive slumps over the railing, looking down in the water. I can hardly believe it. Not only are you two getting along, but you're actually enjoying yourself in his company. You can feel the layers of your guard peeling away. It's surprisingly comfortable. Although, as you continue on your trek, a sign of Shannon on that shack along the way, if comfort begins to disappear. Do your best to internally map all of these trails, telling yourself that even though there's no progress being made today, you can come back alone and search more freely. Hey, Patty? Why do you... Never mind. What? Just say it. Why do you try it so hard to hide your fear? I don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Don't look at me with those gentlemental eyes. Eesh. I guess I just struggle with finding a good balance between pushing everyone away to isolate myself and letting myself enjoy life despite, well, you know. I see. I get the feeling that if you had more cautious, had been more cautious, you wouldn't have come here with me. Probably not. Clive never seems to look you in the eye, but somehow it feels different right now. His nervous fidget stop. It's tense and still. Open your mouth to say something else, but 
That swim without warning, you see a color fading out from Clyde's silhouette. Blue. It almost blends with the trees, but not quite. That knot that's been forming in her stomach twists. Eve, that's what your instinct are telling you. Well, I should get going. Not as waiting for me, I'm sure. Reach for your phone and check it. Where did it go? Did I drop it somewhere? Hey, I... Looks like he has something he wants to get off his chest, but our alarm bells are going off right now. Step off the path, turning in the direction you came. Oop. All right, Maple. Heading off so soon. You... why? Did you miss me? The crap, what are you doing here? Here's when we do have a little chat, that's all. You're an arrogant creep for coming here when... Turn to gesture to Clive, pointing out his presence. But he's gone. Clive has disappeared. I know why you're after me, but... You try to take a few shaky steps back, yet your feet refuse to move, like they're glued in place from terror. You only managed to hurt me last time because you took me by surprise. You know what I am, so you know you're no match for me. As long as he doesn't know that your only pathetic ability is to re is reading hearts, that is. No much. Mm. <laughs> Pity, don't you know what I am? What felt initially like muscles tensed in fear shifts to something more rigid, more intense. Just like the night he attacked just like the night he attacked you in the city. So that's why, not fear, it's him. Are you sure you want to call me an arrogant creep now? You were easy, doll. You needed a friend. He gestures towards the nearby bushes, and you spot him, Clive, standing there quiet, watching. Clive? You want to punch that traitor with all your might right now, but that rage brings a grin to Jasper's face. How could you do this? How could you team up with him? What did he offer you? What Clive had to do is pretend to want to be your friend. He did a great job, didn't he? And they tell you the story of the soul-stealing monster in the river. Let me go. We're on a public path, you know? Do you really want to do this here? Alright. I was planning on taking you back to see your friend Shannon. Let her go. Don't worry. I will. It's been such a corporate guest after all. Yes? So cooperative in fact that I'll spare her from really having to see you ever again. That poor girl, friends with a monster. Shut up. That's not how Shannon would see it. Of course not. She's a good girl, isn't she? And you didn't want to match human, that's why. Bye. The second voice that rang out as a pair of hands slammed into your chest was unfamiliar. Not Clive, not Jasper, but then who? And why? That question tumbles around in the darkness of your mind for what feels like an eternity as dirty water fills your lungs despite your despite your desperate attempt to regain control. But it's not your last thought. No, the last thought you have.
Hey, yo, we did. And see, guys, this is why you save. <laughs> Darn. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, looks like we're, probably... we're sleeping with the fishes. What? We're sleeping mm -hmm. with the fishes. Bro, shut up. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> wow. All right. Wait. Is he gonna? I wonder if that's also gonna take us there. Um... He's still on me, there, right? Do you want us to continue reading? <laughs> what do you mean? Of course. Go ahead, Maple, because Naja did the okay. bulk of it last time. You think about it for a moment. When you look over at him, leg crossed and staring at you expect expectantly like a puppy, you find it hard to say no. Alright, sure. Really? Cool. He leaps to his feet and brushes off the dirt from his clothes. Then, uh... Just give me a moment to grab my phone. Got it. I'll wait right here. He's very persistent. I'll give him that. Where is it? Uh, this message? Hey, hey, just let you know, my might not be back until late tonight. <laughs> Don't stay up waiting for me. Mm, yeah, we just... We read this. <laughs> Relax and enjoy my time with Clive. Really okay. I'm doing it again. I use distractions to avoid thinking about Kay's disappearance and now. No, this is different. Because Shannon isn't missing. She's busy studying. Alright, I'm ready. What the hell? Sorry, you just startled me. Jeez, jumpy. No? Where are we going? Uh, uh, there's this cafe. Oh, the one a few blocks from here? Y you've been there already? I went with Charlie yesterday. Oh. Uh... His disappointment is obvious. Maybe he was excited to show you someplace new. We can go anyway, you know. Besides, I uh, still owe you and Shannon those free drinks. No, I'll come up with something better for today. Maybe, um... You really, you didn't really think this through, huh? I didn't expect you to say yes. We can always just adopt, I guess. I barely know anything about you. There's not much to know. Hmm, I wonder about that. You walk alongside Clive, chatting until you left the house housing area. It's kind of nice seeing these parts of Pirathon with Clive tag tagging along to show you the way. Oh, you already graduated. Yep, and you dropped out. No, I'm just taking a little break. Right, my bad. Are you studying anything? College or university or whatever? Uh, I haven't really thought about it much. Do you need a university degree to do that, I wonder? Do what? Uh, you heard that? Don't worry about it. Just thinking out loud. That makes me more curious. Come on. What's up? Uh, 
All right. So, that coffee shop mentions Laura showed it to me, and I thought it was kind of cool. Do you need some sort of schooling to, uh... Do you need to go to university to make coffee? I doubt it. Then, no plans. No. What about you? Honestly? No clue. I guess I should give it some more thought, but... It is. I never thought much beyond high school. Staying out... Saying it out loud makes you pause. Is that why your life has felt so empty lately? You lived to graduate high school. Anything after that was like a void. So without the, the schoolwork to prop you up, emptiness took root. Feels pathetic now, now that you've realized it. What are you... Patty, get home ASAP! Sorry for the bad timing, but it's urgent! It's about shooting! Need to leave. What's wrong? Hey, wait, you can't just run off. Talk to you later. Thanks for trying to cheer me up. But... Betty... What's Lana doing back so soon? Wasn't she going to be out late? Your mind is a river. No, it's tsunami. Of thoughts. Jumping from one possibility to the next. Eventually landing on the notion you tried to avoid all this time. Jasper. Could he have gotten to Lana or Shannon? Lana wouldn't text for your return without a reason. Lana, I'm here. Oh, did you run all the way here? Of course. Are you safe? I'm okay, I'm okay. But I'll admit, it's kind of nice that I get a hug from you. You pull yourself away from the, the embrace after you catch your breath. Cheeks tinged red with embarrassment. I didn't mean to freak you out that badly, but here. My boss handed me this before I left for lunch. Apparently someone dropped off from me. Envelope? Yeah, your heart nearly stops when you take out the con contents. Oh no. Shannon with a cup of tea in her hand, almost identical to the one in your dream. Underneath it, written in dark blue ink, I'm getting tired of waiting. There's a moment of complete silence while you wait for the information to sink in. And panic. The silence vanishes in an instant. Your hands fly over your, fly to your ears, covering them as the ringing starts. It doesn't work. It doesn't even dim the screeching. Louder, 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 your breath comes in short, fit, fitful gas. It feels like your lungs might explode. No, like your entire body is threatening to explode. Like a shockwave, you feel an energy, feel the energy releasing from your body. Ooh. It's a loud thud that finally snaps you out of it. Your face pales. Lana? You rush to her side, propping her collapsed frame in, up in your lap. Lana, come on, wake up. Sorry about that, kiddo. Just had a sudden headache. I'm fine now. The collapse? I'd hardly call that fine. Deep breaths. Lana holds your hands in hers. We're gonna figure out what happened to Shan, okay? A promise. Sure hope so. Stay home, okay? We go back to work like this. I'm on thin ice with my boss right now, but I guess you're right. I don't have much choice. 
No need to worry about poor Freola. You got enough on your plate. We need someone to vouch for you to get time off. I can try to help. Your voice trails off. Right, this letter was delivered to, to Lana at work. Why? Why Why not give it to you directly? It was like a triple shock, one after the other. The urgent message, the picture of Shannon, Lana's collapse. You don't know what... You don't know Jasper's handwriting, but you do know Shannon's, and you can say for certain that, that the letter wasn't from her. Now you need to think of a way to not... To save not only Kay, but Shannon as well, if Kay is even alive. There's no denying that the orange feather connected the Kay dream to reality. There was a clue to search for the for in the nightmare you just had you had last night too. You think hard, trying to come up with some deep detail that was particular some detail that was particularly out of place. No matter what, you need to search there more thoroughly, for both of their sakes. A shiver runs down your spine. It's so frightening similar to how it looked in your dream. So similar to how it looked when Shannon cheerfully joked around with Clive. Conflicting terror and nostalgia. Nothing seems unusual at first glance. Waves crash on the shore. A breeze runs through your hair, the expected. Certainly no glowing feathers or bloody figures or ear-piercing screams. Maybe you should have brought someone along for backup after all, Charlie or even Clive. But then again, what if, your encounter, what if you encounter danger? Would you want to bring anyone else into this? Movement in the nearby cliff region gets your attention, and you tense. But it's just an older woman walking her dog. An ache ripples along your skull, harsh, painful, nauseating. You place a hand over your forehead and shut your eyes in an attempt to drown it out, quickly, but to no avail. Your legs grow weak, and you momentarily lose balance, managing to catch yourself from falling just in time. You take deep breaths. No. I can't give up. That's when it hits you. The headache has a source. The ringing sound in your ears is the cause. The same ringing you heard in your dream. Despite the continuous splitting headache, you concentrate, and the memory of what, the ri what that ringing became starts to resurface. A tune. A music box. The ring dissipates and leaves only the song behind. It's coming from over there. Following it near feels natural, like some sort of new awoken instinct. The trail, of course. You'd been so focused on the beach that the second half of your dream was drowned out. The sign was clear, don't stray off the path, but the melody in your head it seems to be requesting otherwise. Towering branches hang overhead. You listen carefully for signs of Shannon, but there's nothing there. Am I going crazy? Daylight quickly vanishes in the maze of branches. It's still early afternoon, and yet... Very little light squeezes its way through the leaves. You listen again, still no sounds. No sounds at all. Even the tune has faded out now. It's so quiet that it's eerie, but you continue onwards and hope for something familiar. And then, in the midst of that unnerving silence, you hear a branch snapping behind you. You, you good there, ninja? <laughs> Bro said I'm buffering. You whip around in shock. You. Mm, how fascinating. 
I was about to say, you awake there, Naja? <laughs> uh-huh. Even in the shadows of the trees, you can make out the grin on its face. You take a step back, ready to run, but a jolting surge through your body stops you in your tracks. You can't move. Let me go. Oh, rude. Can't be waiting, you know. I expected you to be here yesterday. Ah, uh, I get it. You don't actually care about that girl after all, do you? That girl. Shannon. What have you done to her? What have I done? Oh, doll. Nothing that you didn't agree to. Shut up. Shannon would never agree to help you. Really? But she told me so much about you. You met in middle school? Isn't that right? She wouldn't stop pestering you, getting on your nerves. <laughs> I'm surprised. A generous middle like you. Such a troublesome girl alive. Shut up. Janet isn't troublesome to me. Where the hell is she, you freak? Freak, huh? <laughs> A heavy thud against your back of your head makes your vision darken and blur while you're while you're sent falling to your knees. You can just barely make out Jasper's face in front of yours before you lose consciousness. Don't worry, doll. You'll see Shannon soon. Hmm. <laughs> I was for certain that was going to be a bad end right there, but I guess not. <laughs> and then we die. Uh, right. uh. Can't make out your surroundings. Even after you manage to lift your heavy eyelids, it's too blurry. When you try to lift your arms and rub the sleep from your eyes, it takes a few seconds to realize that they're restrained behind your back. The realization kicks your brain into high gear. A uh, shack? As your consciousness returns, you notice the pressure on your left side. Get in. Okay. Tell us it's not necessary to be narrator. Okay. Even with your body aching, you feel a million times better after seeing her slumped next to you. She's like an antidote. That cures your pain instantly. Shannon. Shannon, wake up. Shannon. She's breathing, but sleeping too soundly to stir. When your next few nudges fail to wake her, you stop and look around the room. This is the cabin I saw in my dream. Looks pretty run down. Clean, though clearly ta well taken care of, even with obvious signs of an aging building. A table with a simple lamp is pushed against the wall, along with three wooden chairs. A copper sleeping is rolled up a little ways away in a food cooler next to that. The other side is mostly barren, except for a shelf filled with various plants and different shaped vials of liquids and powders. You suspect either poison or medicine. What the hell is this place? Doesn't matter. Get out of here. Your eyes scan the room once more, looking for some sort of escape route. Steps. Oh, hello there. Nice to see you awake, doll. Look, I know what you want. But please. Leave Shannon out of this. She's a good person who has nothing to do with your play for revenge. Don't. Don't you wake over there? 
He tilts his head to the side, eyes practically staring into your soul. You really are getting on my nerves. Leave her out of it. She's a good person. You're right. She's innocent. I would never dream of hurting her. And then let her go. Please. Hmm. I already told you, didn't I? She's not an unwilling guest. What the hell is that supposed to mean? No response. Just a smirk. He takes a few more steps toward you and places his hand under your chin. Ooh. Geese. Geese. <laughs> Sorry. Geese. I know it's supposed to be serious, but come on. You know when they place it there and under your chin, it's like, yeah. <laughs> if you had the courage to do so, you'd try to bite him, but you can't risk making him angry. Not while Shannon is here. Hey, yo. <laughs> but damn, okay. The beast. <laughs> the thing he's gonna say, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You should not just for the fun of it. <laughs> for me, please. Do it, do it. Good girl. <laughs> You're not supposed to act all noble. Oh, whoops. I just now realized I did not have the game musical. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, start all over again. Okay. Right, everybody, start from the top. <laughs> hey, yo, was that your dog? Maybe. <laughs> okay, um. Did, did you use your line logic? Huh? You did? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? You are mutant. A monster. Just like your mother. Chill runs down your spine. He knew your mother. Are you playing with your dog? No. <laughs> My dog's laying on the floor. Uh-huh. <laughs> make sure she doesn't want out. He doesn't look so he doesn't look much older than you. Maybe a few years difference at the most. So he'd have been a kid when your mother died. <laughs> Jasper can't have been the one who ended her life, can he? Was he really a killer from in such an early age? Possible. Yes. There it is. The expression I wanted to see. Don't touch me. Oh, oh I was about to say something. You shake your head to dislodge his grip on your chin. Amused, he walks back to the door. You could have sworn he was chuckling on his way out. Oh god. I am so ready for book three now. Book three? Hmm. Sick bastard. Mm. And in. We're awake. Where is he? She raises her head, looks around in confusion, then dozes off again. Hey, come on. Wake up. Where is he? You're referring to Jasper. Hmm. What the hell does that mean? Oh, shit. You freeze in fear at the steps. Jasper, back to face when you started so soon? Five? Oh, shh. Quiet! Yeah, was... Shut up! I'll explain everything later, but right now, we need to leave, okay? Clive rushes to your side, voice, a hushed whisper, and unties your hands. 
He moves quietly, as if he fears something as minor as breathing would alert Jasper to his presence. What about Shannon? I can't get her to wake up. We don't have time to, to wait for her to snap out of it. You know I'm not going to leave without her. Of course I know that. Here, help me. Confused but grateful, you and Clive work together to get her ready to piggyback with him. But come on, no more, no more time to waste. Nodding, you get to your feet and burst through the door after Clive. We just Maybe run past possibly. Jasper. Like, see you later. What? You just run past Jasper as he's like walking. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Okay, so Nod, I think you can take over narrating. Because he might Clive. come back. In. Where in the world are we? I'm kind of carrying a whole person on my back right now. I don't have energy to talk. That's a point. You're running hands-free and even you feel exhausted running at this pace. Clive doesn't stop until you're well out of the trail. You both look around for signs of pursuers, sighing in relief when it seems he made it out unscathed. With an exhausted grunt, he sets Shannon's body down on the grass. Okay, what the hell is going on? How did you know where I was? Just don't worry about that right now. We need to prior prioritize what here up. I don't think I can carry her anymore. Right. A weak ass. Shannon, come on. Booba. <laughs> Shannon! Her eyes slowly open and she rubs on sleepily. Petty. I'm glad she's safe. The urge to scoop her into her arms is overwhelming, but she's barely managed to catch her breath, seeming a bit dazed. I, I said it. You no, did. That's I where didn't our... hear it. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm not even kidding. I did not hear it at all. Oh shoot. Okay. The horns. Where are horns? Ah, just a lingering dream. <laughs> I feel a bit out of it. What? What happened? I. I don't know. What did happen? Your eyes shift from your best friend to Clive. He shrugs, just as confused as you are. Well, what's the last thing you remember? I remember being at the beach with you. Then... Oh. We went camping in the woods at that night, right? Girl, are you high? <laughs> camping? Yeah, I remember now. We were in a cabin and... Uh, my mind is all hazy. Don't push yourself too hard. Everything is okay. You stand on your own? I think so. You walk next to her in a desperate attempt to keep her safe from harm. Fear hangs over you, so heavy that it might crush you. Fear that if you left Shannon out of your sight again, she'll disappear for good this time. Yay, she's safe and we're not dead. First try. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Getting back to the safety of Lana's home feels like a dangerous journey from hell rather than a stroll for a quiet town surrounded by nature. Erafon, there's something wrong with this place. Lana, Clive, Charlie, Shannon, and now Jasper. 
How does everyone keep gathering here? Why does it seem to have some sort of magnetic force pulls everyone you know towards it? Shake the thought. No, that's stupid. Maybe it's nothing to do with Pyrophone. Maybe it's you. Because you're not even human. Because you're a mutant who hurts everyone around you in danger. Maybe you have some sort of hidden power of destruction. Something that makes everyone around you end up burned in a crossfire of your life. Mother, your father, everyone. You cursed. Perhaps everyone will be better off if you just... Oh my god, you're not messing with me, are you? I wish I was. He glanced at the other room where Shannon is resting on the couch in the living room with Clyde by her side. Telling Lana what happened was harder than you thought it would be, especially in the foggy mental state that he'd been stuck in. Penny, ah oh, shit, I'm sorry, I... I should have been more attentive, I should have said yes to Shannon visiting. That was so stupid of me, I really thought you'd be safe here. Don't blame yourself. I'm the one who put her at risk, not you. You really are nurturing when it comes to that girl, aren't you? I should just consider it lucky that you both escaped unharmed, though Shannon seems a bit out of it. I mean, aren't we all a little bit out of it? Right. <laughs> Three days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that creep drugged her. If it weren't for Clive, we'd both. The voice traced off as his shiver at the thought. Shit. You must just misjudge Clive entirely. Look, he's such an asshole to someone who saved Shannon's life. Idiot, Petty. I guess the question is, is, what now? I can get the car started right this second. That's best. What do we want to do? Uncharted territory. What? We're in uncharted territory. What are we doing? Mm. I think we should go. I think we should go back to the city. Huh? I think we should. I, mean, go back I feel to like the city. it would be dangerous to stay in Parafon right now, though. Yeah. No? We haven't heard from you, Maple. What do you think? Where are we going? <laughs> You're part of this family. What are, where are we going? <laughs> <laughs> just just uh, give your honest thoughts. Uh, I think you should stay in Parathon. Yeah. Well, I agree. You're the, you're the deciding vote. Where are we going? No, we need somebody to do the diebreaker because I'm also wanting to stay. Cause it's like you want to stay because even if we you go know, to the just, city it Jasper doesn't mean guy. we're gonna be any safer yeah but jasper's after us if we yeah, stay right? in the restaurant he like, has an like easier time running of running with jasper with a psycho okay, okay, just guys, running guys, off guys, guys, guys. Like we, we, we came here because he attacked us in the city so it makes you think he's not gonna come to the city as you know he has a harder time finding us in the city no if we stay in Parathon, no. he knows where we're at <laughs> found us pretty easily in the city. Yes. <laughs> you, 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 you're not understanding. Also, he also, also, he also, he wouldn't attack us out in the public. Technically, we were on a public trail. In Parathon. Yeah. Or uh, I mean, like, him? it's a public trail, but it was also like a, a trail. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> it's a trail in. Pri it's a. It's a trail. You don't normally see people on a trail. What do you mean? You don't normally see people on a trail. Like it's more closed off than just being in the city. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay, Maple. Why don't you get into this too? Is it you want to stay? Yeah, I think you stay. Okay. Like, yeah, I think that's Wait. a better idea. I think we're going back and forth with this. Yeah, we are. <laughs> 
I mean, let's we'll see what's gonna happen. Are we gonna die or something? Oh, right, all right. <laughs> Here's what we do, guys. We are going to flip a coin. <laughs> okay, that's fair. In some heads we stay, tails we return. Oh. But my browser doesn't want to open for some reason. I'll just use my phone. Best two out of three. Oh, wait, <laughs> never mind, it's open. <laughs> Why is my computer moving so slow? I, I demand a recount. A recount it hasn't one. even happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> Let me... The coin flip. <laughs> Come on, then load please. Hey, heads. You said two out of three, right? Hello? <laughs> yes, that's what Tone said. Uh huh. Okay. Chance of winning. We are staying. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it, it, it was fair. I had a fifty percent chance of winning. <laughs> okay. Guys, trust trust us, trust us. We know what we're talking about. <laughs> Staying is the right choice. <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but I I get the sense that something terrible will happen if I leave. Guys? Patty? No, that was Shannon and Maple. Oh, oh, that's me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh my god, Patty. y'all sleeping on the job? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Patty? <laughs> you hear Shannon's soft spoken call from the living room, and Lana gives you a reassuring nod. Go if he needs you more than I need answers right now. Caller is appearing again, pink this time. Somehow it seems to be sta saying something left unsaid. I trust you, even if it isn't real. Relief wipes over you. Thank you. There you are. Yeah, here I am. Is your head feeling any clearer? Not really. The more I try to remember what happened, the more it, I hit a wall. She seems to remember the shack, though. Yeah, the shack. And the guy there, a park attendant, maybe? Right. The guy. Can you tell me what you remember about him? Hmm. Long black hair. He's dressed up really nice. He seemed, and he seemed very polite. I think he was asking me some questions. Then I remember you being there next to me, and waking up next to you and Clive for, before coming back here. You don't remember, you don't happen to remember anything you talked about, do you? Um... No, I'm sorry. If I'm back in a room you woke up in, a shelf filled with bottles and vials flashes through your mind, you should try it with one of those suspicious liquids. 
What the hell was Jesper doing out that shack in the middle of powerful nature trail anyway? How did Clive... It help if it helps at all, um, the trail's my favorite place to go jogging. I saw Petty wandering around out there. And you didn't think to, I don't know, call out to me? Ask if I'm okay? If I need any help? I did, but you were, uh, in the zone, having some sort of song. Well, I never heard Petty humming to themselves. They must have been in... Must have been in a real good mood. Right. Go with that. I fear Clay's eyes staring at you intensely. The moment you try to catch his gaze, though, he shifts us elsewhere. And then can I be back in a moment? Sure, what's up? I need to talk to Clay. Me? Yes, you. Oh, uh, all right. Let's go, Clive. What's up? Uh, that your attempt at a normal greeting? I tried. It's hard with all these, with all this going on. Right. Sorry. Well, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know why Shannon's memory is all messed up. But keeping her safe is my number one priority. And for her own sake, maybe it's best if she doesn't remember. So please, don't say anything to Shannon that might make things more difficult for her. I saw that guy with the black hair that Shannon mentioned. She, he's the one who had you tied up. Do you not have any idea who he is? <laughs> He's the one who attacked you in the city, too, isn't he? Hi. Please, tell me the truth. If you- if I knew just a little bit more, maybe I could help you. There's something about the way Clive says it that makes, makes sense to his sincerity, but how can he help? If you really fist tight in, it's all you can do to stop yourself from trembling. I'm sorry. I can't. But... I'm sorry. No. You can't tell him any more than he already knows. Clive saved Shannon's life, and you're grateful for that. But the unending pile of coincidences surrounding this guy is still too much to ignore. I see. His voice came out flatly. It surprises you more than disappointment. Clive seems to be making masking frustration. Never mind then. I hope you and Shannon figure it out. Hey, you're leaving? I'm tired. But we haven't figured anything out yet. What is this? Withdrawal all of a sudden. I done. Is the expression soft and so bad? Yeah. Good night. He just like me for real, for real. No, this whole time I've been sitting there like, is this stones? <laughs> <laughs> this Ekri? Wait, what do you mean? Nothing. No, you didn't mean something. Tell me, boy. <laughs> and he is a lot like you. Um, no. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Suddenly exhausted, you make your way back to Shannon in the living room. Oh, whoops. I didn't realize there was an ad going. Oh, well. They'll be okay. Where did Clive go? 
He died. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my goodness. He was tired. He decided to head home. Uh, I didn't even get, the chan get a chance to say goodbye. Don't take it personally. Can I get you anything? Less water or some painkillers or... Just your company. Thank you very much. You keep running off to talk to people all alone. First Lana, then Clive. Next thing I know, you're going to ditch me to call your dad. Believe me, I'd rather be next to you. But she has a point. You will need to find a way to explain this mess to your father. You can already hear the, his voice in your head, the disappointment that he didn't follow his clear instructions to avoid any guests. Shannon, what's the last thing you do remember? Not a foggy memory, something you know happened. Well, I remember staying overnight with you, then I woke up and, with a text from my dad, telling me I need to get out, get my butt to school. I guess he saw the grade from, for my last month, for my latest math homework. Yikes. I checked my hand and it still looked pretty bad, so I put an extra layer of cloth bandages on it so I could grip the steering wheel. Then I left and... It's foggy after that. Oh, and there was this weird dream. I... What was it again? You rushed to her, grabbing her shoulders and studying her while she clutches her head. Take it easy. Don't push too hard. I'm fine. Don't worry. My head just felt a weird. No biggie. Maybe we should stop talking about this for now. Uh, maybe you're right. Sorry, I don't have any useful information to offer. But if I remember something, I'll let you know immediately. Mom, well, let's get you up to bed. Did Lana get a chance to talk to my dad? I swear he's gonna kill me, kill me by the net, kill me the time I get home. Won't let that happen. I'd hack the school system to mark you present if it came to that. <laughs> After the way you broke it, your laptop, I'd love to see you try. Fair point. And still smiling despite everything, but. What the hell is going on? That's my every day. So little of this makes sense. Jasper's appearance in Parafon, Shannon's memory lapse, Clive's sudden annoyance towards you. The exhausted mind tries with all its might to come up with a reasonable explanation. But there's none. You can hypothesize all you want about Shannon's condition, but unless you went back to that shack, gathered up all of those bottles, and brought them to a doctor for testing, you likely won't find a concrete answer. Your mother might have been able to figure it out what the different drugs did. But not you. You're not your mother after all. Not a doctor. Not a scientist. Just a creature with no thought of thought out future. As for Clive. Clive keeps appearing in the places you are, but really, you keep appearing wherever he is, too. Does he think of you as a suspicious one? Huh. Maybe his reaction of annoyance is warranted. All the time you thought to yourself that you would never end up like your father. But isn't that what he did? He didn't trust anyone. They ended up isolated, all alone, because of it. If you keep pushing Clive away, he's probably not going to be there to save you or Shannon next time something happens. Yet, how can you tell him anything? Where could you possibly begin? And Jasper... Why? Every time you've been face to face with him, he could have killed you. It's his mission. Why doesn't he just get it over with? 
Your nephew Shannon doesn't benefit him in any way except to torment you. Does the bastard want you to break? What does he really want? Don't worry, Shannon. I'll get us out of this mess. No matter what. Right. Can you get us some food? No. Anyway, so you guys, I'm gonna take a little break just so I can get some food and refill my water. So I'll be right back. Okay. And don't make them bored. Is your headband done? All right, guys. The end of stream. We're end of stream right now. <laughs> Immediately hits the end button. <laughs> Come back in about five ten minutes. <laughs> I mean, we didn't many times I could have accidentally ended her streams early. I wouldn't even be surprised. <laughs> Y'all have any plans for today? Nah. Yeah. It's pretty sunny out though. I should probably like be outside or something. Oh, stay inside. <laughs> I'm so jealous of you guys though, because like we literally have a snowstorm and I'm so done with it. <laughs> you have snow right now? Bro, it's yeah. snowing like seven inches. I'm crying. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. We have no snow. <laughs> Or I have no snow. Yeah, we got like very little snow this year. I mean, like, like... We've had snow for like four months now. And I'm so tired <laughs> because like I thought we finally went into spring, right? Because the snow was finally melted and it was getting warmer. And no, it started snowing even more. I was so sad. <laughs> Sad. Mm. Yeah, 
so cold here, like in the 30s or and stuff, uh, Fahrenheit, but like, I don't know, it's sunny, it's weird. I mean, that's pretty good weather, though. Yeah. I think right now the temperature is like, oh yeah, it's like in the 50s, 40s to 50s right now. Trade with me, come on. That's a good spring weather. <laughs> what? I don't know about that one. And, uh, snow sounds great, totally, but uh, <laughs> you, know, you seem to be pretty happy with it. Uh, right? I totally love snow, why not? I swear to god, I live in the wrong country for this, like, I am so tired of this! We've had like a bunch of rain this week, so... It's uh, nice and sunny right now. I mean, I wouldn't rather take, like, rain, so, like, everything just melts, but then it just freezes and it gets, like, freezing. Like cold instead, mm -hmm. so like, mm. bro, I can never win. Anybody try any new food lately? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to come up with starter conversations. It's working, working good. Um, uh, let me think. I mean, not really. Like, mm. I haven't really tried any like new food, but. I mean, like, are we, are we getting going into, like, one of those conversations where we just talk about weird combination and then we just start roasting each other because, like, that's weird? <laughs> we can do that if you want. <laughs> yeah, that, feels, that sounds normal. <laughs> <laughs> but also, one of, us might, might, one of us might make fun of our food combo combos. Like, I am still not over that whole thing of, like... You guys like eat warm milk and, and cereal? That's that what? Warm milk and cereal? That's not a normal thing to do. It's not normal. That's just kind of something people do in like the winter. That's so weird though. Like I've never even no, tried yeah. that. That's not, that's not abnormal. I feel like that's kind of normal. No, it isn't. Oh, no. I've never, I've never heard of anybody doing that, even in the winter. What? Like, I've heard of having, like, warm milk is just, like, a drink, but not, like... A glass of warm milk before bed. Yeah, but not, like, in cereal. Right? I mean, You're... I can understand warm milk as a glass of warm milk, you know? But, uh... like, in cereal? What? What are you thinking? No. <laughs> How is that weird? That feels normal. No, it's not. 100% normal. Yeah, this is really great cereal, like, <laughs> even faster than the normal, than, than yeah, cold true, milk. Yeah, but like, I feel like that's, I feel like eating warm milk with cereal is normal, it's still milk, it's just warmer. <laughs> this is warm. what? Oh, why well, you tell me and you don't have sensitive that, like, teeth? Thing, like, cereal is not supposed to be soggy, like, I hate soggy cereal. No, I think you, you, this is two against one tones. Fine. <laughs> Fine, I will have my warm porridge cereal. <laughs> well, that's what happens, it turns into porridge, then it's not cereal porridge, anymore. Porridge? Well, what's wrong with porridge? Nothing's wrong with porridge, but I want cereal. Right, like, nothing's that's wrong with porridge, thing. but like, you, you don't make thing. your cereal into porridge. <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. Bro, well, no, that's it's not. Nah. Totally is. It's the same thing. Dear God, what is wrong with you, Tones? <laughs> wow! Okay, that's me coming again. Fuck you. <laughs> Let's continue before you dig yourself into a deeper hole. Hungry. I want a sandwich. 
<laughs> You're gonna say I, I want some warm cereal. <laughs> I might. We don't have any cereal though. We're low on foods. All right, let's let's, let's go. Before you get clowned on more. <laughs> Look, you cloned yourself, my guy. The moment you said that you like warm cereal. Warm cereal is normal! No. Down in the chat, tell me how many people like warm cereal. Okay, okay. Naja, Naja, you weren't here for this before, but... <laughs> uh-huh. You, 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 guess what he had in his omelet? What? Cheese and bologna. Wait, what? <laughs> Why is that abnormal? That's not abnormal. That is normal. <laughs> no, it's not. Lunch meat. Okay, I'm so oh, I'm sorry. We don't have lunch meat. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna put bologna. Bologna's normal. Get yeah, a sandwich and not an omelet. Some people are poor, Ekri. You're gonna make fun of people that are poor. <laughs> Look, I'm poor too, but I would never stoop so low as to put bologna in my omelet. That's normal. <laughs> Naja, please, please start repeating, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, I didn't even get my water, hold on. <laughs> Bro. Like, like I, I am just questioning Tone's food choices right now, but it's fine. <laughs> Silence. My food choices are normal. <laughs> No, it's not. What the fuck? You, but you make it, you make it sound like I eat it on the regular. I don't. Like that's oh. that sounded very I'm believable. Told I might eat warm cereal, but all right. Also, I've never actually had warm cereal. I'm debating now trying it. It just sounds <laughs> disgusting. Why would you do that to yourself? Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. It's disgusting? It can't, okay, hold on now. It's just warm milk and, and cereal. That's not, How is that disgusting? <laughs> well, you, do that you like disgusting? Your, your, your water like lukewarm as well? I just drink water. I also get, I also get yeah, but the point is, is that like when it's like warm, it's just not as good. You drink a glass of warm water, it just doesn't go well. The same thing with cereal. Hey, hold on. What do you what do you mean warm water? Like what is warm water? Like I don't know. We like, like slightly like... above room temperature. No. No? What do you mean no? That's I don't drink warm water. No, but that's what I'm saying. It's like it's the same thing where it's it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> It's not not good. Good. Like it's unhealthy? No, it just, no, it just it's, it's not bad. right. Yeah. People are weird. <laughs> We're the weird ones, yo. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not drinking warm water if that's what you're saying. You do. It's I'm making a comparison. You just make it soggy. Like, what's. No. You're arguing about food again? <laughs> Yeah. Come back. Naja. Otherwise, it would just be silence, so. Naja, please. <laughs> A familiar dream. Is she buffering? Oh, wait, <laughs> shit. Money just cut off. Wait, hold on. <laughs> but somehow I'm familiar in the same time. Why do you feel like you've been here before? Deja vu. Hello <laughs> again. Good evening, Penny. Hey. Let's skip the chat this time, shall we? My little plaything. After all, we both know exactly how these conversations go by this point. Get back out there and amuse me, my pet. How's this guy? This guy's weird. Thank you. No. 
<laughs> you open your eyes, but remain petrified in bed, clinging to the small section of your blanket that's managed to remain wrapped around you despite the frightful tossing and turning. This sensation, this anticipation of dread blended with exhaustion immobilizes you and you stare unmovingly at the ceiling. You <laughs> good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I might as well get some sleep in the end at least. The dream you suffered last night was so bizarre that it felt as if you were present in some kind of surreal play at a mere spectator. You look towards the thin curtains of your window that struggle to halt the flooding sunlight. Shannon? Shit, where is she? Fully awake in response to this new fear, you manage to break the invincible chain binding you in place to keep you on your feet. A knock at your bedroom bedroom door floods your brain with fear and hope all at once. You are Rosen and you up text IRL. <laughs> yeah, there's Shannon downstairs already. Yep, we were both getting worried. Got any idea what time it is right now? Waking up early was it at the top of my priority. Okay. Is everything alright, kiddo? You stare at her, feeling your mouth widening in my perplexity. Is she serious? Is everything alright? She can't really be asking you that after everything that happened. It's a common phrase, he's being nice. Penny! Please hold while Ekri eats. <laughs> I'm just a bit surprised at everything that happened with Shannon and Clive yesterday, you. Clive? Yeah? You didn't pretend you met with Clive yesterday. That's great! Y'all, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Aw. Huh? You feel your body tremble. Intuition is guiding you to take caution for some reason. To refrain from saying something that you wouldn't be able to take back. Give me a moment. I'll meet you downstairs. I'm making brunch, so don't take too long. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? You struggle to fish out the right words from your scrambled brain. Is that how you talk to someone who just went through a terrible event like being kidnapped? Lana looked that she, she does just about any other day. <laughs> I was definitely there last night. When I noticed that. You bury your face into your palm as you recall in detail yesterday's events. The shit? Did she really blame me for waking up late after that? That's so helpless. If it weren't for Clive, I... What would have happened if Clive hadn't come to your rescue? Would that creep? truly have killed you? Would he have killed Shannon? And what Lana said, you can't process this rush of odd information. 
Vanna's greeting with such nonchalance, her incredulous look, but you mentioned, and you mentioned Clive. You already dislike what they said it. Hey, feel a little more awake now? Where's Shannon? Wash up in the bathroom. Maybe that's for the best. You can probe Lana while you wait for her. Lana, about what you said upstairs. You really don't think Clyde was with us yesterday? Her face shifts a look of concern. She steps forward to take a face into her palm, observing. The touch of her care brings you back to memories of sanctuary. I mean, when you are a child and you feel a shakiness begin to come. You don't look so well. Got some brain fog going on today? Or... Oh, I'm fine. Please answer me. As far as anyone told me, you and Shannon marathoned Princess Robin after your study session. You two even skipped dinner, so maybe you two, you were just too tired to tell me? Princess Robin? Studying? What the hell? Am I still asleep? Is this still part of my nightmare? You told Lana everything. I know a bit about mutants. She knows you and Shannon were kidnapped. She knows Clive rescued you. She was there when he brought you home. How could Lana not remember any of that? Right. Lana, do you still have that letter? Letter? The weird letter with the picture of Shannon. The what? <clears throat> Lana's comforting touch comes to an end when she pulls away in surprise at your words. What are you talking about, Patty? You stare at her, trying desperately to identify signs of humor on her face, but nothing can detect tells you that she's making fun of you. And if you know anything about Lana, you're certainly you're certain she wouldn't pull a prank on someone in your situation. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. It's a joke. You burst out with laughter and attempt to cover up the awkward atmosphere for the time being. But once you start, the laughter derail until you're struggling to stop cackling if you lost your mind, while a small tear begins to leak out of your eyes. Don't look so worried. I've never been break before. Oh, you little ha ha. You nearly gave me a heart attack. She shuckles and punches your arm playfully, beaming at you. Uh, I don't know what, you, what got into you all of a sudden, but I like seeing you laugh like this, Betty. Are you tired, Tom? No. You sure? You, you, you kind of sighed right there. Getting hungry, but I'm fine. Okay. Did she actually buy that? No, judging from her expression, she still has reservations. You wonder if it's for your sake, for her own, that she's decided to drop it so easily. Honestly, I was really worried about you when you first got here. You look so depressed and riddled with anxiety. I thought the days when you'd play silly pranks on me were long gone. I'm grateful that you managed to preserve parts of your old cheerful self, even though all those hard days as a kid when I... 
when I ran away. No, that's... Here, my, I swear I'm not trying to drag the mood down. Where did all that come from anyway? I may have been able to play along with the joke if it didn't come out of nowhere. <laughs> I guess having Shannon, or Shannon around is a bad influence on me. <laughs> If he's the one that brings out the best in you, then I'm eternally grateful to her. I will. Thanks, Lana. Anyway, my chicken, Shannon. Brunch is ready, and it'll taste best fresh. Yeah, be right back. You can't help lingering internally on the great performance that you just pulled. The scene shining and confirming she's still safe, yanked to reality. Sorry, I swear I'm almost done. Take your time. Thank goodness. Penny, I thought you were with- I thought you were Lana. Come in. No, that's okay. I didn't mean to interrupt. Don't be silly, I'm dressed already. What was the last thing you say? Question. No, it's okay. We'll just do that and call it a day. We're going inside, boys. There's my bestie. Morning. Jenna's bright smile is dazzling as always. She flips her newly dried hair with her fingertips and gives her head a shake, a shimmering blonde fluttering in the air in her wake. You manage to smile back at her without too much effort in spite of circumstances. Morning. Did you just wake up too? Yeah, I'm getting just as lazy as you, huh? Hey, rude. But you have a point. Just proves the last we had yesterday if we're both this tired. She looks so cute and innocent when she laughs at you that you almost forget how off it feels. This girl pour powers her, pours her all into expressions. Honest like a puppy. There's no way Shannon is faking her smile right now, and there's equally no way that she referred to being kidnapped as having a blast, which means... So she doesn't remember yesterday either. Patty? Sorry. I guess I'm... Ow! Yo! Sorry. Guess I'm still a bit tired. We had a great time watching that show, huh? I haven't had that much fun in a long time. I almost forgot how it felt to just forget everything bothering me for a whole day. About that, uh, was Clive with us yesterday? I've had this headache ever since I got up and my brain is a bit fuzzy. Are you alright? I'm fine. It just happens sometimes when I'm exhausted. Have you seen a doctor about this? It's no big deal, really. Maybe I'm just too lazy to remember it properly. If you say so. Jeez, you worry the crap out of me sometimes, Patty. But nah, Clive wasn't there. Just you and me. And an awesome night of Princess Robin. Uh-huh. So you came after school yesterday. No, what are you talking about? I came first thing in the morning. You skipped school? But I thought you were worried about your attendance. Are you sure everything is okay? Yeah, I just...
Don't. Oh, me. <laughs> you too, your food's getting cold in here. Don't make me start eating without you. Bro. Oh, it's me. Bro, forgot he was in a Discord call. <laughs> Whoops. We'll finish this later. Shannon's face flushes red with embarrassment as she fumbles hastily to finish up her morning prep. Do you cook like this every day? I'm so jealous. I admit, I might be showing off a little for my guest. Still, this is amazing. You're super lucky to get meals like this, Patty. Patty? Oh. What will you say? Your mind races, even with the delicious food Lana's placed in front of you. Never. Is your head still feeling funny? No, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. If you say so, how about another muffin? Oh. I'm sorry. <laughs> If you say so, how about another muffin to cheer you up? Maybe later. It hurts to see Shannon Crane con contort into a frown of your distress. This is exactly the things you always try to keep Shannon safe from. Yet here she is, dried head first into it. Maybe it's for the best if she doesn't remember. At least she's happier that way. Sensing your discomfort, Lana pulls Shannon into another topic of conversation while they eat. You take a small bite of your food and observe them with, without clouding your mind. That did all happen yesterday, right? It couldn't be that I just imagined it all as part of an elaborate bad dream. <laughs> Growing so used to these ceaseless nightmares that I somehow accepted them as part of my regular life. But... Probably isn't all that normal after all. Is the stress of it starting to affect me too much? Am I? No way. Yesterday was not a dream. I watched it myself. I watched my surf. <laughs> I watched myself turn into a monster in my nightmare last night, and being kidnapped felt even worse than that. Not free of freedom of. I'll make something more to your taste next time. Oh, um, no, it's not that. You've been totally spacing out all the all morning. And you barely touched your meal. Your friend is getting cold. My bad. I was distracted, that's all. I had a little headache all morning. Most cliche lie imaginable, but probably better than trying to convince them that the memories of an entire day are wrong. You sure? Your face is a bit pale, kiddo. Yep. You grab a tall glass of orange smoothie that you've yet to touch on until now and down half of it at one gulp. I'm already feeling a lot better just by drinking this. You must have used lots of fresh fruit in it. Aw, you flatter me. A glance at Shannon is all you need to touch, it's not fully convinced. Uh, there's too many things that you can't remember or that didn't happen. At this point, you're not sure which it is. There's no point involving either of them further than I already have. They're both victims in this. Right, Shannon. How's your hand feeling? Healing up really well. Ta-da! She lifts her hand, waving at the bandaged area through the air.
Yeah. All right, that definitely happened. Logically, then, it doesn't make sense for the other parts not to have happened. What can I say? I'm a tough cookie. So, what are you guys playing today? I'll be leaving soon. You stiffen. I need to get home tonight before my dad goes totally insane. Life is a lot more fun when he's less pissed at me, pissed off at me. Uh -oh. What the hell happened in here? You're back. Hi, Papa. Sorry, I didn't have much. I didn't have time to clean up yet. I made a pr I made a fresh batch of cookies for you. I know they're not as good as Mama's, but why? Huh? Because I thought maybe it would cheer you up. You looked so down lately, and I, I know you'd always smile when you eat these cookies. You've always been this socially inept. How could you possibly think this was a good idea? You, just get rid of them. But I... Get rid of them. Now. Uh, okay. Papa? Mm. I'm sorry. I didn't make you, I didn't mean to make you cry. I know. Sorry, Shan. I walked into the kitchen and saw you there with that apron and those oven mitts and I... I was just caught off guard. I didn't mean to yell at you. But I meant it. Don't do that again. Does that mean I can't bake anymore? That's right. Just stick to cooking. Baking it... won't get you anywhere in life, anyway. At least if you know how to cook, you can put those skills to good use in the future. I understand. Oh, right. Is it okay if Petty comes over tomorrow for afternoon? Now isn't a good time. You start high school soon. Studying has to take priority, not to mention all the cleaning that needs to get done around here. I'm returning to work tomorrow. Without her around, you need to step up. Understand? Oh, yeah. I understand. I wanted to protest, but I couldn't. I wanted to tell him that baking can be useful. People run bakeries as their main job. For heaven's sakes, but I couldn't. I wanted to say that I'd already studied for three hours today and needed some time off, but I couldn't. I wanted to tell him that I'd just... I wanted to tell him that I'd just be, be just like Mama. She didn't go to the college or university. When she married Papa, she was happy being a stay-at-home wife. She was never very good at cooking, but she was a great baker, and she didn't see cleaning as a chore. It was stress relief for her. At least, it was. I don't know when Mama stopped smiling as much. It's hard to remember the exact time, date, or time. Papa, too. He used to have such a kind smile. His gentle face and strong hands made me feel safe with him. I started to wonder if Mama's decision was selfish. Things changed after that. But I started to understand Patty better in the aftermath. Yeah, he sounded pretty frustrated on the phone last night. Right. Thanks for helping out. I owe you one. You can always count on old Lana to have your back. Still, Petty, I totally didn't comprehend anything we studied yesterday. Am I that hopeless? I can't even rem remember what subject we were on. Studied? Uh, yeah, school. The only reason I was able to stay was because Lana promised that she'd supervise a study session, remember? Right. Another thing to remember that I'm sure didn't happen. Petty? Oh, of course. It just slipped my mind. 
You're going to be able to audition for a career as an actor by the time all this is over with so many lives. Oh, my leg was muted. Want me to call him up again? Tomorrow is family day after all. Right. The unnecessary holiday that gives students half a day off to spend with their families. Uh, I appreciate the offer, but... I've already hung out way longer than I planned. If the offer still stands, maybe I can visit when I'm off school. Of course, you're welcome here whenever you want. Your instinct is to argue, to tell her to stay here where you can keep an eye on her, especially after the last attempt at returning home ended in disaster. But she's right. Maybe being somewhere that you aren't will be for the best in the long run. I'll miss you. Cheer up. Don't think skipping town is going to be enough to get rid of me. You managed to finish the food on your plates, but overwhelming nausea has begun to well up in your belly. Was it really just a nightmare? No way. You can still feel the rope you used to bind your wrists. For now? I need to focus on not looking crazy until I get a chance to talk this over with my dad. For that, I'm actually not. Yeah, I don't know. You know what? I'll just save here and come back if I want to change my mind. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm a safe Andy, I know. I mean, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think... I, well, I think you... If what? you've done what Clive did, I think you should go with Charlie this time. What? If... If Charlie... If Clive is blacked out... Oh, alright. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I don't take suggestions from people who eat bologna in their omelet and eat one cereal. <laughs> wow, that's what we're gonna go with? That's what we're gonna base our decision off of? Alright. <laughs> Shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Whatever he picks, we do the opposite. <laughs> Fuck you. That's not a good idea. That is not a good idea. <laughs> There's still one other person. What about Clive? He seems to pop up around me. I'm sure it won't be long before I see his. Shannon retreats upstairs from the brunch. He has the chance to find a quiet spot where neither she nor Lana can listen before calling your father. Hey, your pups. <laughs> you lean against the shadow trunk of a nearby tree, exhale deeply to expel the agitation building up inside of you, then press your father's name in your phone contacts. Good. Hey. I'd say it's good to hear from you. But that Gregan was even more unenthusiastic than usual. Tell me what's wrong. Right to business, huh? I guess it would be pretty weird for me to call just to check up with my father. Hmm. 
That's not to say you can't phone just to chat. <laughs> but I have a feeling that ain't the case this time. <laughs> After a brief silence while you gather your words, you speak out in a whisper. I got almost kidnapped yesterday. What do you mean, you think? Well, come on, tell me everything. You do as it says, starting with the day and left for home, the picture of her and the cryptic letter, the clue in your dreams being knocked out, Clive's rescue. Listens in silence, not reacting even when you tell him the worst parts in vivid detail. A lack of reaction scares you. You can't blame him for he doesn't believe you, even if you've begun to doubt your own sanity in the wake of all of this madness. I think Jasper altered those girls' memories somehow. How else do you explain it? It had to be him. I swear it happened. I'm gonna dream all that shit up. Calm down. I believe you. You do? Though I'm not sure what his motive is here. If he caught you as described, then why would he settle? Why would he settle for a capture? It is pretty weird now that I think about it. Not just weird. It's bizarre. Goes against all the things we know. Or thought we knew so far. Not to mention the new intel Dexter gathered. What intel? Oh my god. Not the neighbors. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> R Rip. It's nothing. Never mind. What's that supposed to mean? I'm serious. Tell me. Then Yah and Lana's care was a huge mistake. Is he suggesting that Lana's to blame? What the hell? She's just so much of a victim in this as Shannon names. Lana took it in knowing that something had happened. She must have known she'd be putting herself in danger as well. I'm sorry for putting you and that girlfriend of yours in that position. And this one was on me. No, this is all on Jasper. He's the one who did this. Maybe altering memories is his power, or or maybe he has some sort of drug, or... Hey now, relax. So like I said, I'm not doubting you. I know. Sorry. I don't know how he did it, but I'm sure as hell going to figure it out. No, you most certainly are not. Coming back to the city immediately, do you understand? Pack up your things and come home with Shannon as soon as possible. I don't know where we'll send you after that, but right now, the safest place for you is where I can keep an eye on things directly. I shouldn't have trusted someone else to protect you right from the start. What? I don't know what else that freak may have done to Lana and Shannon. We can keep an eye on Shannon in the city, sure, but what about Lana? I can't involve Lana in this shit and then abandon her to deal with the consequences alone. <clears throat> That's enough. Brace us the way he's, he snaps so suddenly. You haven't heard him raise his voice like that in a long time. I won't argue with you. You're in danger. Don't you get that? Come back here for now and we'll figure out the next move. You mean you'll figure out the next move. I'll be left out for most of the important decisions yet again. You hide things from me. It's what you do. It's what you've always done. And I've never had any... Oh, the, the, the. And you've never had any faith in me to make decisions for myself. So, I won't try to convince you to trust in me anyway. I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. My decision. I wasn't safe in the city, but you're right that I'm not safe here either. So, does it really matter where I am if either way I'm screwed? I won't abandon Lana. <sighs> you're so damn stubborn. Guess he got that from me. It's not really the time to be chuckling. Do you realize how foolish it is to stay in that danger zone? Maybe you're right, but I won't change my mind. Okay, looks like I'm gonna have to get over there and drag it back home myself. What? Are you serious? I am, but if you ain't coming back with Shannon, you're gonna keep on being stubborn. Damn it all, it's critical that I finish this up first. 
I swear to God, if you don't cut this cryptic bullshit out, I'm hanging up. And just promise me you won't do anything reckless until we can talk in person. Call me at the first sign of danger. You're changing your mind just like that? I can hear your father exhale deeply on the other end, just like you expected. More secrets. More lies. You use the pause of glance cautiously at your surroundings for anything that might seem out of order. You know, somebody might be watching you right at this very moment. You'll need to be extremely careful from now on. Petty, so this is where you're hiding. Oh crap, Shannon is here. I gotta go. Whoops, did I interrupt? Nah, you're welcome face right about now. Cut off the line and show the phone back into your pocket. Shadow of the cold tree, hard against your back, is cool contrast and comfort to the uncomfortable heat of your body. Who are you talking to? No one. Don't worry about it. Oh, someone's got a crush. It's not that. <laughs> 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 <My daddy. laughs> and another reason I should be heading home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Gotta pick up Aristotle from Dustin's house. Girl died for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him spending another second with that jerk. That jerk. If your hunch about his treatment of Shannon is correct, use the same words too. You're surprised you say that about her boyfriend. Is your head okay? Jerk as in my ex. My ex, Dustin? Your ex? Hetty, were you not listening to anything I talked about last night? It was the whole reason I came to Pirathon. She stares at you with uncertainty, it always cements further in your mind that the need to get to the bottom of this is a real nightmare. First I should convince Shannon to stay here. It isn't safe for her to go home after her last attempt ended so badly, and I can't risk her leaving my sight. <sighs> Shannon leads in towards you, stalling your train of thought. Hmm. Don't tell me you were daydreaming. Now that I'm single. No, it's not it. <laughs> I'm teasing. Your face is so red right now. Right. I guess I'm just glad to hear you broke up with him after how he seemed to be treating you. You really weren't listening, were you? Petty, he broke up with me. Oh. But that seems to contradict all of his earlier behavior. He seemed possessive of her, not on the verge of a breakup. You climb up on the side of Shannon's throne. Shit. If only you remembered what she remembered. At least this leaves room for an inconsistency that you can look into. I still was nowhere near Jasper. If you can get answers from him about what happened in the last few days, then maybe... There's no more room for mistakes. This isn't just about your life being in danger anymore. Shannon and Lana and potentially everyone that gets close to you, everyone you care about, is in the radius of justice, burst harm and manipulation. And you guys wanted to leave. <laughs> Your father brought up a good point. What could Jasper possibly gain from from crazing everyone's memories instead of simply killing you? Is he a sadist who joins the hunt? It might even be more dangerous than you thought. You're overjoyed that Shannon is safe and sound, but the strange loss of memory makes no sense. Obviously, it's not her fault if it's anybody's, it's yours. 
You trap it between warning to stay f as far away from her as possible and fearing what will happen if she's away from you. Where's K and now? You can't let this keep happening. You can't let the people close to you keep getting hurt. How can you keep Shannon from ending up with K without putting her in the front line of another attack? What? Petty, wh what are you doing? Let me see them boobas. <laughs> <laughs> Come back and give back for you. <laughs> You know I'd love to stay, but I gotta go. My dad's gonna seriously lose it. I wanna help you last night, right? So this time leave it to me. I'll talk to him. Won't you stay here? Just a few more days? You know how much I missed you. Even if you persuade my dad, I, I can't. I came here even though I need to spend like every second studying to make sure I graduate. If I skip more of my study sessions, my dad is totally going to put me under permanent house arrest. But who knows when we'll get to hang out again next. How am I supposed to survive without my best friend? Where's all this adorable odyssey coming from? Gosh, you really have grown up since you moved here. Does that mean you'll stay? It means I wish I could with all my heart. But it's not possible right now. Please. Eddie, I... You have to stay. You don't get it. Um... Ah. <laughs> Turn to the sudden rise of your voice. Shannon, take a step backward. I can't let my emotions get the best of me. I, I didn't mean to shout. My bad. It's just... Like Lana said, tomorrow's a holiday. I'm sure it'll be fine if you skip one more half day. I don't think you should leave here alone, and I can't go with you either. At least not yet. So, just a bit longer. Maybe I can visit you in the city. We can both go together with Anna. You're acting kind of weird. Did you forget I came in my car? What are you talking about? What do you mean I should have let... I shouldn't leave by myself. Do you trust me? With my life, you know that. Her voice is soft whisper that makes you just feel hollow. You can feel her anxiety building, but at least if she's here, even if she thinks you've lost your mind, you can keep watch over her. I need to keep trusting me. Right now. Please. Shannon hides a sigh and nods. She smiles, but you don't feel it's warm for anymore. For you, fine. I'll stay. But that call to my dad better be good, because I don't want to spend the rest of my life locked up in my room. I'll wither away and die without social interaction. Right. I'll do my best. Tough crowd, huh? It, it was a joke. Sheesh, you'd think the world is coming to an end with how serious your face looks. Come on, smile a little. Right, the joke. <laughs> Let's get that phone call over with, shall we? It's ridiculous as it sounds, the idea of Shannon being stuck inside her room isn't looking like such a bad idea anymore. At least then, she'd be out of harm's way. Managed to arrange Shannon's father not to immediately flip out at the idea by telling him you and Shannon have joined a special study group to prepare for exams. It should at least keep the frustration at bay. It seems like your lies are spreading like thriving vines on a wall. Hopefully, no one gets caught up in them somewhere down the line. Hopefully, you don't get caught up in them. There. All unpacked. Happy now? Happier, yes. I admit, it's kind of nice that you that you wanted me to say that badly. I've been wanting to talk more, too. Last night was all about what I had to say. 
Tell me about what you've been what you've been up to. Nothing much. I talked to Clive for a bit and You did, huh? Last time I visited, I was kinda of surprised you got along you get along with him. Not to say there's anything wrong with him, I just didn't expect it. Now that I think about it, he's using the same tactics she did of throwing friendship at me until I have no choice but to accept it. But unlike Shannon, Clive doesn't exactly have the self-confidence to back it up. It's rather welcome relief that it prevents him from putting it all in annoying you into being his friend. If not for Lana pushing you towards him and the loneliness of moving to Parafar, I might have never given him a chance, but... Terrible? Between him and Kay, you're becoming a social butterfly lately, aren't you? Maybe all four of us can hang out. Ooh, or five. Or six. Especially if we meet up in Parathon, we could invite Charlie and Lana along. Should definitely become better friends with Charlie. Shannon. Did did I say something wrong? No. It sounds nice. But the situation with Kay, it's still a sour spot. You would by help studying, right? Let's do that. You're, you graduating is more important than me making more friends. If it could ever be possible for that kind of social gathering to happen, it could only be once he was gone. Once Jasper was no longer a threat on your life and the lives of everyone around you. Oh, okay. I guess you're right. For a bit, the only words you exchange are study tips. With everything that's been going on, you were actually behind where Shannon is in class. Thanks for helping me out with this. Of course. But like, we don't see each other that much. At, see each other much anymore. Maybe you want to get back on track, but I want to get off track. I want to hear more about you. Didn't you miss me after I went home? After all, we didn't text for a whole day after that. So she remembered that part. You make a mental note of it, trying to keep it the information straight in your mind. Didn't you miss me? Of course I did. But everybody's skipping school for this. Weren't you scared you wouldn't be able to graduate on time? You need to get serious. Right. It hurts to see a disappointed face, but it's so hard to talk to her normally with all of this going on. The doorbell rings from downstairs just as Shannon is done solving an equation. You park up, trying to catch some of the whatever conversation is going on from front entrance. The answer comes from the form of Lana's yell, followed by heavy footsteps on the staircase. Petty, Clive is here! I sent him up to your room! Maybe he could sense you asking about him this morning and knew you missed him, huh? It wasn't like that. I was just confused. <laughs> she giggles mischievously when she sits aside for her homework. She must be relieved to do so because she hums a tune of half recognized from one of the episodes of Princess Robin that he watched with her. Hey, uh, Clive, uh, it's Clive. Come on, you can say it. You can say a simple greeting. This weirdo. Hey, it's Clive. Mind if I come in? <laughs> Playfully hush shush Shannon with a finger on your lips to quiet her laughter before opening the door. Clive re removes one hand from his hoodie and offers an awkward wave before shoving it back into the protection of the pockets. 
Hey, Patty. Hey, come in. My fidgets his way for the door. He smiled at him. A genuine smile, surprisingly. His appearance brings the potential for more answers. Nice to meet you again. Oh, you're here too, uh, Shannon? Shannon, you jerk. Don't pretend you don't know after adding me on Star Stark Social. Uh ha. -huh. How are you doing? We're fine. Better than fine now that I get to stay in another night in Pyrathon, am I right? Yep. Time of our lives. Am I intruding? Oh, totally. Me and Petty were super busy doing absolutely nothing important. Mm. It's a joke. It's funny. Oh, sarcasm. You know it's a good joke when you have to remind everyone that it was funny. Ooh, meanie. So, what brings you here? I've shrugs. Shrug is looking around the room at just about anything except your face. I was gonna go for a jog and I suddenly realized Lana's house is in the area, so since I was passing by, I figured I should head over and say hello. You know, to Lana. Hello to Lana, obviously. But then I remembered Petty is here and I guess hanging out for a bit wouldn't be too bad and maybe we could do you ever breathe no oh <laughs> 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 uh, you you're really shy how adorable Shannon does the majority of the talking while you make an effort to participate and Clive settles for announcing his presence with a nod or shake of his head every now and then I need an opportunity to talk to Clyde about what happened. How can I do that with Shannon around? And then Dustin gave me this. She gestures to her bag, the same bag that she told you about the night before. Vince looks a turn towards Bizarre. That looks expensive. Is your ex rich? Seems like it. Your impatience of getting deeper by the second. You don't have time for these sorts of casual chats right now, especially about Dustin. Shannon. And then, huh? I'm thirsty. Would you mind checking if Lana has any more of those orange smoothies from breakfast? Bold of you to ask the guest you begged to stay to run errands for you. Sorry. I could go ask him, go ask him then. Nope. I need you to stay here. Uh... I mean, no. <laughs> she loves him. Jenna's <laughs> eyes narrow and her lips raise into a knowing smirk. You can only read the expression as well. It's humiliating. But if she takes your words as a sign that you got a fame for Clive, that might work out for the best right now. Fine, fine. I'll get out of your hair. Thanks. Girls are so weird. What the heck was that, was that about? Forget about it. I had a question for you, actually. A question we had to be alone for? Don't start blushing. It isn't anything weird. Okay, okay. What was I supposed to think, though? Clive, did you and I hang out yesterday? Uh, that's your question? No, I don't think we did. You stare at him, trying to read all your might to read his awkward demeanor. 
the desperation we get to the bottom of this is suffocating. You know, I'm really starting to think I should have asked Charlie instead. But then it's like, mm -hmm. oh, you guys really want to go back. <laughs> We're already this far. That's what we <laughs> We've already gone down this route. Oh, okay, it, it tones. <laughs> you settle down. <laughs> <laughs> what? Are you sure? Don't you remember seeing us? Why? I don't understand. You having trouble remembering or something? No, I'm not. Okay. <laughs> It's hard to say he's more surprised at your broken voice. You, who barely feel in the control of your own words, or Clive, who flinches like he's expecting to be hit. I mean... I don't know. It's like you're floating inside of your body, watching someone else cry, and you're shocked by the sensation of tears getting in your, in your eyes, too. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, stupid. This wasn't how I meant to react. Just trying to survive. Sensation, that nausea, is kicking and your body is beginning to shake. Your eyes grow blurry, your head pounds, everything is going wrong. Panic is slammed to, to halt when you feel a hand reaching out and grabbing your shoulder. With tears filled eyes, you can make Clive's narrowed eyebrows an anxious expression. Don't be afraid. What are you, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> I come, my child. Uh huh. I don't know what's go gotten into you. That gotten in. Got what the fuck? I don't know what's gotten. Got you in this state, but I'll tell you right now, I'm here for you. Why are you so embarrassing to talk to? I, I think it's the other way around. Wow. <laughs> I'm trying to say that I'm here for you, so don't be afraid. Tell me what's wrong, please. No. I'm not gonna um, save. What do you mean? I, I literally did. just saved, bro. <laughs> Calm down. It, it, it buffered for a second. <laughs> Jesus. You guys hear him? He's like, you're not gonna save me like that. Hey, yo, y'all want a snoodle? No, no snoodling. I know, it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Enchanted might come back and break her heart. You nearly gasp as you feel a sudden rush of calmness coming from his hand on his shoulder and the sincere tone of his voice. But in your current state, you can't figure out how to react to the touch. The trampling doesn't stop, but you feel frozen in place at the same time. If only you could let yourself be vulnerable for once. Tell me what's wrong, please. I don't know even do any more. These past few days, I feel like I'm living in a permanent bad dream. I don't like that. Like, you're having a nightmare where you're stuck in a place where a monster hunts you. And all you can do is stay frozen or fumble around with no way out. Uh, no, I don't have really have dreams. Everyone has dreams. I never remember mine then. You're lucky. 
Some dam must have broken inside of your mind because words and tears seem to flow more easily now than they have in a long time. You don't know if you're happy about it though. It's terrifying to feel vulnerable in this way, especially with someone unfamiliar. Yes, he still is. But you're relieved to slightly more than where you were before you started crying at least. And that's more than you can ask for at this point. Clive sits beside you in a silence with face twisted in pain. He, pit he pities you. On a typical day, you find this frustrating. And even you pity yourself right now. Maybe sharing pity with someone else will help relieve your burden. You wipe your tears and awkwardly sit back a few inches, avoiding looking directly at Clive's face in your embarrassment. The shaking stops gradually and the nausea setting as well. Slowly but surely, the rampant beast of emotions that has taken control of you goes back to sleep and you're ready to go back to calm and collected pity Monet mode. Feeling better? A bit, yeah. What are you gonna do next? I don't know. Everything's a mess. I think I made a mistake asking Shannon to stay here. Just let her go home. I encourage her to leave after this. Seems like a good idea. He must be so confused after hearing you talk like the world is about to end while bawling your eyes out. If he doesn't remember, it would be unfair to burden him with these troubles any further. Hey, uh, so sorry for the wait. Shannon, you're back. Why do you look so surprised? I hope I wasn't interrupting anything. We were definitely not smooching. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. Half expected Shannon to tease you about being alone with Clive. If actually takes you back when it should doesn't. I made some new, new I made some new smoothies. They aren't as good as Lana's, but I use the same ingredients as my fave drink at the smoothie bar. Her grin helps you calm down further. She pauses off the honey in the smoothies, speaking carefully. Are you okay? Why is your eyes so red? I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I'm totally fine. You... holding out on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Penny was telling me they've been having headaches lately. Maybe their eyes are sore? Uh, Patty, is that true? Yeah. Damn, migraines. Hmm. You know what will make you feel better? Caffeine. When I have migraines, I down a cup of coffee and it fixes me right up. It's like, great idea. <laughs> Terrible idea. <laughs> How about it? If we could go check out that cafe. <laughs> that is a terrible idea. I don't know. I don't really feel like going outside. Ah, uh, come on. You know you'll like it. If you don't want coffee, we can get tea or hot chocolate instead. Fine. Both of those are great ideas. It'll make you feel better. I know it. Trust me. I hate to break to Shannon's bubble when she's enthusiastic, but out in some place public as a cafe is terrifying thought right now. How can you explain that to Shannon without sounding like a total agent of paranoia? I already have plans. Plans? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever those. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. 
whatever those plans are, I can join in, right? The more the merrier. Even if it's just errands, I can help you run them. No, I was going to stay home and study. But Clyde was going to help too, right? I gave him a desperate look, trying to beg him for an out. Don't tell me you forced me to stay just so we can study all day. If you want to do something else, that's fine. You can go downstairs and watch Princess Robin or Dr. Anna or... Do you want to be alone with Clive that badly? No, of course not. Do you like Clive more than me now? <laughs> A shadow crosses Shannon's face that she mutters something barely audible under her breath. Panic wells up inside of you. Come on, don't be ridiculous. I wouldn't. I think you could go, Petty. Even Clive agreed. You buy who you let guiltily. All right, Shannon, you win. Let's go. Yeah. See, your bestie always knows what's best for you. Here, I'll go put these smoothies back in the fridge for later. Be down in a bit. Too enthusiastic about going. That's not it. I'm just being stupid. It's best not to let fear guide your actions, right? What? And if you ever need anything from me, just ask, okay? Since when are you so reliable? Hey, rude. Totally reliable. No. That's how we said it like yesterday. Right, whatever you say. Are you gonna tag along again? Are you inviting me to come? It's weird to have met, but it feels strangely more comfortable with Clive after your moment of understanding earlier. <laughs> oh god. Oh, you're inviting yourself. <laughs> I don't want to come with. <laughs> Oh my god, are you okay? Yeah, it's good. You sure? You get a cough oh, drop? Water. Yeah, I'm right, fine. Make you some lemon tea. I do have tea. Oh, nice. Wait, what, what, what does this one do? Hold on, I just want a little peek. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh. <laughs> but wait. Even if I pick that one, I still get them. Uh oh, you know. Well, no, because she. But then it's like, oh. Okay, hold on, let me just. Aren't the blacked out options the ones that you already picked? No, it's the opposite. Okay. Tones. Yeah. Tones, my honey bunch of sweetie pie. Why are you always so confused? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Uh... Mm. Mm -mm. Did that do anything? Yes, I'm cheating. <laughs> You're cheating on Clive? <laughs> Shannon? Look, I cheat on both Clive and Shannon with K. Fuck you. Oh. <laughs> Nah, I just figured you would try to invite yourself to come anyway. I wanted to spend as much time with Shannon while I can. While you can? Never mind that. Just as I had expected Shannon to question you about your time with Clive, 
I expect Clive to pester you about what you mean. But if that seems they're both surprising you today, because Clive shrugs and leaves it at that. Oh, Clive. Oh, Clive is coming too? Nope. Just you and me. Jenna pursed up slightly at the news. Maybe she wanted to spend some time alone with you, just as much as you did. Heck yeah. Besties reunited. Oh, you're seriously going to knock me over with those tackle hugs one of these days. But it happened yet, right? I know exactly how- I know exactly how much I weigh. No. <laughs> I know exactly <laughs> how much weight I put into that before you fall, don't worry. Don't worry, you're, you're getting there. You all good, Maple? Oh, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I just can't read, that's all. West Coast education. Oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, yo, boy, yo. Oh, my mic was muted. I right, get going. Oh, I don't sound so disappointed. I did not sound disappointed. <laughs> See you again, Clive. Even if you don't invite him, he almost guaranteed to make another appearance. He sure does. Bye bye. Later. Shannon grabs your arm, smiles regularly at you, and starts pulling you ahead. You're like a little kid when you do that. Excuse me, Yuku. I happen to be a few months older than you. Don't forget. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Is it just me, or is this caf cafe even cuter than the ones in the city? Probably because it's locally. It's a locally owned store. We need more adorable little hangout spots like this, and. In Sandwood. I'm getting sick, so sick of every coffee shop having the exact same atmosphere. Boring. That's such a you thing to say. In contrast to Shannon's cheerful glow, you make sure to keep your eyes glued to the suspicious shadows that seem to lurk around every corner in your surroundings. You got to remain vigilant, not just for your sake, for Shannon's too. Petty. Oh my gosh, it's even better inside. I could pretty much live in a place like this and be happy. What you think? Should we just move in? <laughs> I'm glad to see you're enjoying the atmosphere. Welcome. Enjoying it? I love it. Right, Petty? Petty? Huh? I was talking about how awesome this place is. Right. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Anyway, how do you how do you guys not have like a million customers? I've never seen you around here before. Guessing you're not from your thumb? We're from Sandwood City. Jim. What what? Did I do something wrong? Sorry, I didn't mean to raise my voice like that. I'm just gonna go grab a seat for us. <sighs> Alright then. You trudge along to one of the booths near the window. Someone that you can keep an eye on on your surroundings. Hearing Shannon's disappointment at your lack of enthusiasm is heartbreaking, but you just can't seem to fake a smile as easily as usual today. And how could he possibly be expected to? I wonder if he would have liked this place. Seems like the sort of person who would enjoy the atmosphere. It, I miss him. I hope he's safe right now. Maybe we've seen him in my dreams lately. 
even that is gone. Hey, look at Shannon handing the barista some money. This place is nice. The lack of customers make it far more ideal spot to be in the bustling coffee shops you're used to seeing. Okay, I just want to ask real quick. Does anybody need to take a little break? Uh, yeah, I do actually need to step away for a second. Okay. Mm. And go, go. We need to go. We can take a little break. I know you said you wanted food tones. Did you get your food? We don't have any in the house. Huh? We don't have any in the house, so no. But did you say you were going to order food? Mm, no. Oh. We gotta save money. And you're good now, Jen? Oh, I guess she stepped away. Uh, but yes, we're just gonna be taking a little break, guys. We'll be right back.
Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Don't you good? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Did you read this, Nacha? Yeah, I did. Okay. You, you, you can take some deep breaths and enjoy the scent of freshly brewed drinks in general peace and quiet assuming you haven't gone completely insane and yesterday really happened if there's any proof i can find then i can present it to shannon and lana Shannon really seemed out of it when i first saw her there some trace of <clears throat> drugs might still be in her system and even if she was drugged that explains her memory loss as an account for lana and I could go back to the trail and search for the shack as proof. Huh. If that ever happened, I'm not going anywhere near that place. You shake the thought aside as Shannon approaches with a tray of goodies. Hey, uh, I got you a cup of tea. Oh, thanks. I'll pay you back later. No, I had a little extra cash saved up, and you treat me all the time. So, what's on your mind? Nothing really. Shannon takes too much energy today. You'd better just listen to Shannon talk like always. Tell me about how things were when I moved. Well... I got into a big blowout with my dad, for one. Being at home is totally exhausting. I'd rather be out here. Is he really still difficult to be around since the divorce? Divorce? Yo, parents got divorced. I thought her mom died. Oh, right. My parents, duh. Yeah, he's a mega downer. I get that he misses her, but it's been a... It's been, what, like two and a half years now? Even though Shannon is practically brimming with positivity and good qualities, I always found her non nonchalant behavior towards her parents' divorce a bit of pudding. Did I ever tell you about the time that my mom spilled hot chocolate on our brand new rug? I breathe in a sigh of relief. Mine is still storming with your own issues, since that feels like navigating a complex maze in comparison to the minor damage of Shannon's mother spilling a drink. Funny story, it's a welcome break. Eddie, what's wrong? N nothing. It's just been so quiet and I didn't expect to see other customers walk in all of a sudden. You're so observant today. I didn't notice- I didn't even notice them come in. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, like I was saying... Trying to do it without making it seem like you're ignoring Shannon, you glance towards the entrance. A grimoire to the side. These two men from the day you visited with Charlie are here again. Yeah, looks like you're right. This wasn't a complete waste of time after all. Now, if only that damn waitress would take our order. Who do you think is worse, her or that bitch at the grocery store? What are they talking about this time? The barista is no inside, like they're getting another employee, perhaps the manager to keep them out again. Hey, Earth to Petty, do you even hear a word I just said? Oh my god, Petty, are you alright? I flinched the moment her hand touched his arm. No matter where your thoughts were before, you jolted into reality that the hot liquid seeping into your thighs. The, cock, the, the cup you knocked over made it through the ordeal in fight, but your pants. What did you just say, Noja? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
That was still super hot. Come on, let's go to the bathroom. Wait. Ice is bad for burns, right? So tap water is our best bet. Shannon grabs a handful of napkins and dries you off before you can protest. She mumbles to herself to kneel down in front of you, wrapping your leg gently. Hey, you? <laughs> Come on, this is embarrassing. Nah, -uh. Nurse Shannon wants to help. Now stay still. Fine. So kind. So gentle. She doesn't deserve any of this bullshit. What in the world made you, made you jump like that? You practically flew out of your seat. I'm sorry. I don't want an apology. I want you to tell me what's up. You've been acting so weird like today. Hey. Once she finishes turning to your leg, Shannon gets back to her feet and takes her face into her hands, gazing into your eyes questioningly. Why won't you talk to me, Patty? You can't help but lean into her touch. Despite everything else in the world, her soft hands holding your face and thumbs gently caressing your cheek. It's like heaven right now. That's better. Relax. Breathe. Now tell me what's up. Can I... Yeah? I think we should head back to Lana's. It's really starting to sting. Shannon shows a slump as she removes her hands. The calming touch replaced by a cold air conditioner blowing. Just give me a moment to use the bathroom before we go. Alright. What the hell am I doing? Everything would have been simpler if Shannon just remembered. How does Jasper's memory altering work? Can he do it from a distance, or does he need to be in a physical contact with them to do it? If the latter is the case, then you need to stay away from anyone who looks suspicious. If you lose your memory too, what the hell would have happened? Be defenseless. You return to the table of a cautious glance around. Those men from earlier, they're already gone. Looks like you were nervous over nothing. Shannon's head is down. Sipping away at her latte, latte thinking of smiling nibbles of chocolate chip muffin. You get the plot back down across from her and stare into your empty cup, searching for the right words. Petty. Mm hmm? Am I bothering you? What? There's something in her voice that pauses you. Not just that, the way she doesn't meet your eye when she talks too, it's unnerving, coming from Shannon. Should I not have come to Parathon? I mean, you didn't even tell me where you moved. I'd probably still not know if it weren't for Charlie. No, what are you talking about? Uh, this is what I get for showing up without warning. Maybe I'm just being selfish. I thought... I thought it last time we hung out too. You were happy to see me, I could tell. But you were also guarded. Kinda like you were trying to hide a secret from me. It's more complicated than that. Is it really? Or do you just not trust me enough to open up about what's going on in your life? You've always been like that, but now... I barely, I really barred my whole heart. I really bared my whole heart to you when I came yesterday. You didn't even seem to remember what we talked about. Did that mean nothing? Or was it too heavy for you since I, I've always given you happy, Shannon? Lately, I, f I feel like I'm watching a drama playing out from the audience when I'm with you. I don't feel like a character in that drama. 
just an outcast waiting to see what will happen. Undesirable. Mm. Your voice crack, catching you in your throat. The hell? Why would you say that? I don't know. Maybe it's really, maybe it really was a mistake coming here. Without even knowing you, why you moved in the first place. If you told me you were moving after the, after the accident, I'd think that's, I'd think it's fine. I'd think it's that. If you were already planning on moving before that, Maybe you wanted to get away from me and all my continuous babbling about stuff you don't even care about. One second. A rip ad time. <laughs> <laughs> Always in like the... The very tense parts too. Right. <laughs> For a second. Okay. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> there might still be people here. They're not in the head. Uh... Ninja, are you here? Damn. <laughs> Random lurkers. You don't have to respond to tones, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. <laughs> tones you says the most random shit, it's it's okay. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Nah, but it's like a billion degrees in here now. Damn. Yeah. It's too hot. So what argument are we going to get into now? <laughs> what, what, what next can we argue about? I don't want to argue. <laughs> I, um, I just want to eat. I'm starving. Oh, bro, yeah. go get something to eat. We don't have food in the house. Oh. I'm trying to save money. Oh. Like, you don't have anything to eat at all? Did you run out of Oreos? No. Well, we have, like, ingredients, but it would take time to, like, you know, cook something. Mm hmm. Yeah, understandable. That's why you gotta have the uh, emergency top ramen or uh, cup of noodle. I fucking wish. <laughs> I wish for that, but I get fucking harped on every time I eat it. No. Uh, well, that's unfortunate because, like, cup ramen noodles is like. It's necessary if you don't have anything else, you know? Yeah. Yeah.
that I didn't think we planned for this weekend. Uh, I mean, like, nothing too much. I mean, I'm just pretty much just catching up with my anime and, like, studying math. Oh, what anime? Uh, I mean, like, right now, I'm watching, like, the seasonals, like, of Carrie Diaries, um, A Sign of Affection, <laughs> Seven Time Loop, and stuff like that. It's, it's a really good season so far. Well, nobody wanted to argue about something, so like, <laughs> what else are we supposed to talk about? Hello, <laughs> my little baby boy. Hi. Welcome to the stream. I literally just came back from a micro break. Somebody came home. So, you know, as cool. usual, I gotta show up and show that I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I'm not dead. <laughs> All right. You you read this already, Maple? Uh yeah. Okay, just check. I'm gonna go my mic and wait. What? Nothing. <laughs> Shannon, no, that isn't true. I care. You care about it when I talk about guys. When I t tell you about all of my dumb, stupid relationships that never even work out, that you know right from the start are doomed to fail without, with my track record. When I go on and on about a TV show you don't even like? Baby model? No, it's just a PNG. I wish it was a model though. <laughs> but thank you, Nico. Thank you. I know that I'm overbearing, and and maybe sometimes I overstep my boundaries and push you too far, and maybe you came here because you wanted to pursue a relationship with that guy, Clive. I don't know anymore. With a feeling of glass slowly shattering into pieces, but in your mind, all you can do is stare at her speechlessly in disbelief. I was really happy when you asked me to stay here. You know, I, I thought it was kind of weird that you were so insistent, but I was really happy. She slowly gets up from her chair. A dark shadow has fallen over her eyes. It couldn't get any worse, any different from the cheerful and bright shadow that you used to. I'm gonna head out first. I'll meet, I'll meet you back at Lana's. I feel like you've just been hit by a truck. For you, the bond you got with Shannon is similar to how it was between you and Lana when you were a child in her care. The child version of you that never had to think about her seriously until the day Lana was gone. She left, it struck you hard. And her place was a strange man you never met before introducing himself as your father. It stung. What the hell? Sting, it hurts. I could linger between breaking down and tears right there here in the middle of the cafe and wanted to jump to your feet and chase after her, but... I feel frozen. Not by some icy grip that Jasper seems to have, but by your own insecurities crashing through your skull one after the other. Jenna feels like an outcast, like you might have moved to Paraphone just to get away from her. And and what the hell was she saying about being with Clive? I ever her relationship. I wish you could explain more, but that could just put her in some danger. It could get more complicated. Telling her the truth about the kidnapping wouldn't be enough. The memory loss, the weird behavior, the move to Paraphon. There's no way to find her. Even if you've done everything you did for her sake, the damage it caused is obvious. 
can make something up, sure. Lying isn't really going to help this. But would be less likely to have a permanent rift between you two, coming off some excuse for your actions, or telling Shannon you were born a freak. Determined, you get up from your chair and storm off the cafe. But I can't lose the most important part of my life. Always there for me. Always smiling for me. Always ready to hear me. Even when I don't want to be heard. I'll keep her close to you at all costs. There's still time to catch up with her if you run. The hand clasp over your mouth as you pulled into the darkness prevents it. And we're done with Act 2. There's still like one or two more to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, no idea where to start. Uh, I'm just trying to think. Mm, I think Maple for now. Wait. Who do you have again, Maple? I have Kay and Shannon. Okay, you have to be an air reader since you're essentially kidnapped. Okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. The tones are Alana and Live. Mm -hmm. Live may appear. And you're Jasper and Natalia. Mm -hmm. Jasper might. Okay. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the tones go ahead. So we haven't had any lines so far. <clears throat> Shannon walks like a cat. You never... You, what the fuck? You'd have to be listening carefully to hear footsteps. So, no one heard her approaching from downstairs. Climbing with a tray of three glasses. Lana's leftover smoothies. Dog. And no one heard her standing outside the bedroom. I figured that. But she didn't. She heard. The cries. She heard them. I don't know. Everything is a mess. I think. I made a mistake asking her to stay here. Shannon peeked in through the crack of the door, watching her best friend and the strange boy with the red hoodie opened up to each other. She was thunderstruck by it, and not in a good way. Patty was confiding in a person neither of them knew well, actively choosing that over Shannon. But it just left a home. I'll encourage her to leave after this. A gaping expression expanded on her face as she stared, unable to take her eyes off the scene. The tray was made of glass. She... Her delicate... Her, bleh, her delicately thin fingers ripped so tight that it may have shattered if she were a bit stronger. She turned around like a puppet, hanging on strings, and descended the stairs, going back into the kitchen to dump the smoothies in a bout of frustration. I'll make new ones. Something to occupy your mind, noisy like an ocean. Why would Petty confide in him, but not her? She had never thought of herself as a jealous person, but it felt like betrayal. Was Clive the one who was always at Petty's side? Was Clive the one who always wanted to help Petty escape from that inner darkness? No, that was Shannon. 
The pieces were coming together. The move, the secrets, the withdrawal. Shannon wondered. Read it. No? Am I becoming obsolete? Oh no. Oh shit. Not now. You struggle against the grip as you're dragged forcefully to the shadows of the closet out close mm -hmm. to the alleyway. I'm going to the shadow. What here? In the middle of the day? No. Ah yes, the dark alley. Your captor releases you, and you stumble a few steps forward, barely managing to catch your balance in time to prevent it all. Prevent a fall. Huh? No. That's not the voice you expected to hear. Your vision focuses it on the person in front of you. The Shadow Man! You know, <laughs> I heard you weren't. Damn. I expect you to run that slowly. When do you just have so little brain power? You actually thought I just let go. Look, I don't know what going on about you have the wrong person. <laughs> That has to be it, because this makes no sense. Oh, me. You going now? And where do you think you're going? You turn to find yourself blocked in by an unfamiliar man. A man in a black shirt and jeans. Guy from the cafe. Second one I saw back there must be waiting for escape. Why are you working with Jasper? I don't know why you're helping that creep, but you don't have to do this. The look of confusion on the man's face only serves to confuse you as well. If he's not with Jasper, then... So you're, type, so you're the type that pisses off so many people at once that you can't even tell them apart, huh? Oh, well, that's better. I always did think you were so dull and emotional. At least when you're scared, you actually look human. His words catch you off guard. Human? Yet, he's not working with Jasper? Then... then why would he stay? Tell me who you are. Ooh, you got some spunk too. Anger suits you well, but you don't... Really, you really don't remember me. Even a bit. That's cold. I even went out of my way to remember your name at school. Ooh. Wait, your? Bingo. The dick! Don't just this makes you in less sense by the second. <laughs> what is Shane's ex boyfriend doing here? Calm down, Nelson. <laughs> He's an asshole! Damn it, Shannon must have mentioned where she was going. You should have prioritized telling her it was a secret instead of trying not to get her involved. Listen, I'm sorry about your. But I didn't have anything to do with that. You really think so? Damn, you're an absolute idiot. Shannon broke up with me because of you. She said you broke up with her. <laughs> I wouldn't understand. She wasn't supposed to agree to it. She was... She should have realized what she'd be giving up. Aristotle and a good future full of love. She has dreams that she can't live with and live out with just anyone. It's why we were perfect for each other. But no, she threw that away. Because you, a stupid expressionless freak, were more important to her than anyone else. She tossed any boy that so much as glances at you in a way he determines to be negative, and I thought what she and I had was different. And before I asked her out, she said that I'm different from those guys, I'm better, but you still managed to screw it up. But You had a hunch that Dustin was controlling, but this is beyond that. He's fucking insane. 
And... Where's Shannon right now? Shut your mouth. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. Don't change the subject. So, I thought long and hard about it. What is it that she likes about you more than everyone else? Do you manipulate her into codependence? This freak is one to talk. Or maybe you really aren't human. Why would you say something like that? Shannon tells me everything. She confides in me, including that weird shit you asked her about mutants. It weirded her out. I thought you were one of them. I thought you were just some sci-fi obsessed nerd at first. Oh. Oh. There's something about you. I couldn't shake that feeling ever since that day at school. I was walking away with Shannon, but you, you were just standing there, eyes closed, but somehow glaring at Shannon and following her movement, like you were looking right into her soul. Any idea how creepy that shit is? I should have told Shannon about it right away. Damn it, I knew this stupid power would come back to haunt me someday. Maybe you've got some sort of freakish hypnotic hold on her. That's the only explanation for why she'd give a damn about a loser like you. And when she realizes how pathetic you really are, she'll leave you too. Just like she leaves everyone else. No, I'd never do anything like that. And is my best friend. I care about her, I swear. You have this all wrong. Stop pretending to be all noble. I can't stand people like you, I. <laughs> so this is weird. Oh, this is Jasper. Nope. Oh. Oh. You flinch in terror at the voice of a second person. Are they here to hurt you, too? Is this whole freaking world out to get you at this point? <laughs> <laughs> what? Look how she's in the chat. <laughs> That's what happened, though. It's just like, what did you expect would happen? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's you. Is it? Read it. But when the person steps into view, you're taken aback. This innocent-looking kid is working with Dustin? Dad is gonna be super upset, you know? Boy, where did you find me? You took my favorite car, dummy. Dad said you have to ask for my permission before you use that one. Hmm? Who is this person? That? I don't know who you are, but please help me. This guy is insane. Oh. Shut up. <laughs> Dusty, are you being a bully again? No, I just... The men dressed in black from earlier appear in your line of vision. Both of them this time. You can't fight them and Dustin all at once. And this kid, Dustin's younger brother perhaps, is far from strong enough to do anything but either. Yet, to your surprise, the men don't seem to be stepping to Dustin's side. Bring Dusty back to the car, okay? Got it. This isn't fair, what the hell? supposed to be helping me sorry kid your father's orders were to follow choice directions first and foremost Arrgh. one of the men puts a hand on dustin's shoulder as if to drag him away but he quickly shards the hand off and shoots the man a glare don't touch me i'll go willing good choice joy are you coming as well Give me a sec. Don't take too long. You guys are still waiting in the other. You guys are still waiting in the other car. I'll be quick. What the hell just happened? Sorry about all that. Hope my little brother didn't do anything mean to you. I'm safe, and that's all that matters. Wait, little brother? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm Joy. 
We're only half brothers, but I feel responsible when he gets all jerk like and stuff. You think back on Shannon's words. That's right. She mentioned something about Dustin actually having a rich daddy that spoils him. Looks like this kid, uh, maybe not a kid since he's apparently older, is even more spoiled. At least he seems tolerable in comparison. Wait, wait. Are you that Shannon person Dusty's been talking about? No, but I'm a close friend of hers. Oh darn. I'm super wanting to meet her. Let me anywhere around here. I wish. I'm pretty sure she's in the city right now, isn't she? Yeah. Good. Dustin's priority seems to have been carrying me away from being not hurting Shannon direct. Hopefully she got home before Dustin's away. No. Maybe you can introduce me to her sometime instead. How did it, things end up like this? Shoei gazes at you with excited eyes. He's even shorter than Kay. That's saying a lot. <laughs> but you don't have any intention of getting Shannon into another dangerous situation. This guy seems naive, to say the least. He probably doesn't understand the extent of Dustin's manipulative behavior. <laughs> right. Maybe. Rud, I couldn't bring myself to say no when he's looking at me with those puppy eyes. Oh, mister. He turns his attention over to the man near the car. Can you bring him over here? Yes, sir. Him? His own tail. I have something for Shanny, but I'll need to deal with Dusty first. Bring this to her for me, okay? Shanny? Here. Before you can protest, a tiny ginger kitten is plopped into your arms. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait. I'm not a sh I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Here, here, add me on Star Social. Promise as long as you're friends with me, Dusty will leave you alone. Dang. Better get going. Message me later, okay? I'll reply back. I'll reply back quick as a bunny every time. Guaranteed. Bye. That was bizarre. At least I'm safe, I guess. Shannon definitely would have made it back to Alana's by now. I gotta love getting kidnapped. Okay, who is Choi? Who is this guy? Who is this? Dustin's half brother. It literally just said it. Were you not? <laughs> yeah, I know, but he's a new character. I want to know all about him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bro, really said who is Choi? A new character. Like, he literally just read it. I know all about him. They seem cool. <laughs> anyway, read your line stones. <laughs> Nudging your back to reading. Yeah. Where's Shannon? Huh? Upstairs in the bedroom. Thanks. Talk to you later. Is that a kitten? Shannon! Yeah. You burst through the door before force and intended. No, Jones, no, you're not the narrator anymore. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Because a lot of appeared, which means one you're narrator not... until. Fine. Hey, that's because one of your people showed up, okay? You burst through the door with more force than intended. You gotta stop doing that. Huh? You're out of breath. So dashing up the stairs with all your might, you skid half in front of the her, crawling the calf with one arm and taking her shoulder into your grasp with the other. Wait, is that Aristotle? You didn't listen to me. You were the most important person in my entire life. You have been for, for so long now. I care about you the most in this world. I know these are super cheesy things to say out loud. It's completely out of my style, but it's true. 
Kenan, I... I pause, breathless, when smile slowly creeps up on the Shannon's lips. Your entire body relaxes at the sight of it. I know these last few days don't exactly prove my words, but I don't want you to go. I told you to stay because I... I love you. <laughs> Say it. Say it. I'm scared of being alone. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, let me save because we haven't saved in a while. Surely this should put us at like the very end, right? Really? Yeah. Nice. Perfect. We are done, fellows. <laughs> no batting things here. <sighs> Love you. Huh? You're my best friend. I haven't said those words to you nearly enough. I don't remember ever saying them. I was too embarrassed. But I love you. And you'll never be an outcast or a burden to me. Never. Shannon takes their hand into hers and squeezes it lightly. You silly goof, you. Shouldn't you know better than to say I love you out of the blue to a vulnerable girl? Oh, sorry. It's okay. I know what you mean. I guess I'll try to forgive you then. A sigh in relief, thank goodness. Letting things over was far more easy than he thought it'd be. Shannon is clearly grateful to see the kitten safe and sound. Despite her obvious curiosity, she doesn't question where he found him. More to the point, she doesn't seem to want to hear your explanation right now. Instead, she gives you a weak smile while hugging Aristotle. And um, avoids your gaze completely as she utters a set of words you never thought you would accept her mouth. You want to be alone. Hey, what was that all about? Just a small disagreement, that's all. Why is she? She said she wanted to be alone for a bit. And the cat? Long story. I can see that. I hope everything is okay. You seem a bit off earlier. Shannon got here before you, too. Are you two fighting about something? It's more complicated than that. For now, I'll give her some space. I get it. Come here, sit with me. I'll I'm beating this boss. You're tired to do much else. You take Lana up on her offer and watch her play a video game. She's just clearly confused, wondering about Shannon and the sudden appearance of the cat in her home. She keeps her questions to herself. Sometimes Lana seems to be opposite of Clive in that regard. She goes out of her way to avoid questioning your actions. You're quiet as you watch, and while your silence may not be anything too new, you're still too dumbfounded by what just happened earlier to reach out to Shannon. Should I tell Shannon about what happened with Dustin? She's probably still wondering why the hell I had Aristotle with me. Would that just make her paranoid? Maybe she think I'm deflecting? Even if he just wanted to scare me away, he still acted freaking insane. Jenna was friends with that jerk since your second year of high school. It's hard to imagine they were close for that long and she had no idea what it was like. Maybe it wasn't like that at first. Maybe it's just one of those situations where everyone snowballs together into toxic situations that's formed before you know what hit you. From playing video games? Nah, that's stress relief. Just that the very thought of going to work somehow makes me shudder. See, you were supposed on my arm just for mentioning it. But enough about me. 
Did you at least have a good time at the cafe earlier? Yeah, it's a really nice place. Uh, I'm a bit of a regular customer. Come to think of it, even after all these years, I haven't checked out all the local hotspots in Parappa. Guess I'm a creature of habit, just going to the same places over and over again. Mind. She shuckles oddly, but there's no trace of joy on her face. What I'm getting at is, how the heck would I manage to get through work without some caffeine, caffeine in my system, right? Your boss sure takes a lot out of you, even when he's not around. Yep. Maybe I should go back to college. Qualify for more job opportunities. Speaking of which, how's studying with Shannon been going? Don't forget about summer classes. Alright, though. I'd go get the laptop if Shannon wasn't still locked up in my bedroom. Maybe you should go check out on her. Supper time isn't far off. She has a point. After a few deep breaths to better yourself, you head up to the stairs and knock on your bedroom door. Is she asleep? Listen carefully for some kind of sign, but the sound that hits your ears doesn't come from the bedroom. Water running. Must be having a shower. <clears throat> you open a door. A sleepy kitten is curled up on your pillow and sheets of paper are spread out all over the bed. It was study, huh? Barely ever studies voluntarily. And she didn't think. She didn't ask if I wanted to join. Oh. Was the bus with a few handfuls of wet napkins wrinkled up in it. Jenna must have been crying all alone in here. I give the kid in a pat, relaxing with the sound of his purr. Right. Not all alone. At least she had you, Aristotle. Helplessness washes over you like the waves of the beach as you retreat from the room without the laptop. Any appetite that you may have had is fading to the same sickly sensation in your stomach. Again, is the nauseous feeling side effect of being attacked by Jasper? Are you being punished for your wounds healing too quickly by suffering invincible systems instead? Mind is numb, head is throbbing, and heart is overwhelmed. The supper table is where you hoped Shannon would be smiling and chatting like usual. You are silent and cut short, but Shannon's hurrying out of the room after she finishes her food, using the excuse that she needs to check on the cat. Even Lana, who barely knows Shannon, is flabbergasted by her actions, and she furiously had grown steep in concern. Lana puts the Shannon's plate in the fridge, then sits down beside you with probing eyes and brow furrowed in deep concern. Patty? Yeah. Come on, talk to me. What's really going on? It's complicated. I've been through a whole lot of complicated situations in my life. I can handle it. Come on. She speaks in a tone that makes you feel like she's looking at the same child she used three little red frightened her to all those years ago. Come on, kiddo. You can trust me. Well... After some hesitation, you make the effort to explain that the way that Lana can understand. The best way I can think to do, that is. What? Tell her the truth. The truth? Her boyfriend's an asshole. What are you thinking, Nadja? 
How would you um, best describe this situation? Yeah, I would tell her about that, about the boyfriend. Mabel? <laughs> I would go with... Shen is, is jealous of Clive. Really? Why would you say that? Mm. I think it explains the situation a bit more immediately. Okay, and why do you guys say the boyfriend? Because remember... Hello? Either one of you? <laughs> um... Why do you think... Saying her boyfriend is a trick is the best way to explain everything. Because... Isn't that the truth? But is it also true that she's jealous of Clive? What do we know if she's jealous of Clive? We literally just read a thing where she got so upset that she literally dumped out the fucking smoothies. Yeah, but does Petty know that? Technically, no. Well, kind of. Like, she pretty much said it in the cafe. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I feel like either one of them would kind of work. I mean, like, it, it depends, but like, Shannon's ex boyfriend, like, it's, it's always also like a route to, to, to like a lot of it. But like, it, it's probably more complicated to explain than just saying that like, she's jealous of Clive. Well, you could always default and say, I'm still feeling weird since the accident. I feel like that's still, I feel like that's a, like a cover up though. Yeah. I feel, like this is, I feel like this is like a turning point and like we need to pick something. Otherwise this is going to blow up at some point. Well, we're not going to get anywhere like this. So if we go to our good old friend Google. <laughs> <laughs> what? Hey, Petty, how, what do you think you should say? You're the you're the, the third option. You're the fourth option here. You don't think. <laughs> also, at the moment, it's like two against one. So... No, it's technically two against one. Oh, so you're... Oh, you want to tell... You want to you wanna choose... Jealous of Clive. Okay. All right. Five heads. Boyfriend kills. All right. Kills. And heads. And then tails. We're going to boyfriend. Here. Sorry, Maple. I have uh, good. Here. I mean, technically I do, but if we <laughs> want to be a little bit fair. <laughs> I, I guess so, fine. I know, right? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what? She and this boyfriend cornered you in a broad daylight? In breath on of all places? It's a bit quieter. I still haven't decided whether or not to bring it up to Shannon. Damn right you should bring it up to Shannon. That's beyond creepy. And I bet she'd be really sad that you're avoiding her because of that jerk. I didn't actually say it was because of Dustin, but that assumption might be for the best right now. It isn't okay for anyone to act like that, and the fact that he's rich makes it even more annoying. Thank goodness his brother showed up. I'm glad the kitten is kitten made it to his mama shit and safe and sound. <laughs> Alright, I get it now. Penny, here's what you should do. 
Just lay it out on the line. Tell her every detail you can muster so that she knows. You're not <laughs> keeping the secrets for her. God damn it. Are you good? That's <laughs> <laughs> so fine. All we hear is the slow descent back into the man voice. <laughs> oh, it's going through puberty. I've been I've been taking too many smokes. <laughs> <laughs> I developed the habit while you weren't looking. Broom. You really think it'd be that simple that I can just tell her the truth and she'll be okay with it? Of course, I mean it. Tell her everything. Don't leave any details out. She's a big girl, after all. A simple statement of you're my best friend isn't enough sometimes. Honestly, is the best way to fix this one, kiddo. I guess you're right. Sorry. Don't apologize to me. Apologize to Shannon. Look, don't make the same mistake I did by running away from the people I care about, okay? Try to be there for them no matter what the situation. What else do we live for if not for the people we love? Ourselves. Her sass mouth breaks your heart. She's still beating herself up about leaving you. Oh, I have an idea. That ex of hers would be back in the city by now, hopefully being scolded by his dad, so... There's a place that's just a short walk from here, a beautiful field of flowers. I haven't been there in years, but it'd be a perfect place for a heart-to-heart. -heart. Flowers? Yeah, I don't know how else to say it, except that there's something special about that spot. I think Shannon would love it. Lana's face found a yet in a melancholic tone of nostalgia. She must have had her own memories of the hard heart in that place. You glance out the window, the sun is setting, but if you can convince Shannon to leave now, you should be able to get there before dark. But... What are we choosing? Yeah, what are you guys thinking? Oh, you guys want to offer your thoughts? Okay. I'm thinking... <laughs> Think faster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... No time! I think Flowerfield is a better idea, but also, like, I don't know, something bad might happen, I guess. Naja? Yeah, I mean, I had the same thought, like, I mean, I would want to go through the flower field, but, like, I don't know if shit is going to go down and we'll go through the flower field. No. I'm kind of in the same boat. I think going to the flower field would be good, but something's <laughs> probably going to happen. I, 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 okay, what do, what do we think about talking at home? Yeah, what do you think about talking at home? What do we, what do we think? I mean, it's safer, but I don't know. It's Maybe. a safe option, but I feel like it wouldn't. I don't I mean, think it would be to... absolutely would... impactful. Yeah, I don't think it's going to lead us to the same ending. Maple? Uh. Take it. I feel like that's the boring choice, but it's also the safe choice. Okay, okay. So, we can go to the flower field, see what happens. And if we okay. die, we die. <laughs> okay. That sounds like a good plan. <laughs> death, death, death! <laughs> what about the kitten? Don't worry, leave him with me. I'm sure I got some food you can have somewhere around here. I'll give it a shot.
Wow, I never expected to hear you beg for a trip to see some flowers. <laughs> I just thought it would set the mood. If, it, if I didn't know any better, I think you were asking me out on a date. Well, you better think that I am. <laughs> <laughs> she gives him a smile. A weak one, but that smile not a mess. Soft expression in the setting sun makes her look more shy than usual. I thought that the invitation alone would be enough to spark some light back into her heart. Fact you can still see the swollen skin under her eyes from crying is painful though. So, what's up? I feel like the biggest trick in the world where she can get the way it did. So, wanted a chance to explain it to you properly. And it couldn't wait until tomorrow morning? No, it couldn't. For all I know, it might disappear overnight again. I can't risk that. Please, it's killing me to see you this way, Shannon. The frown on your face. This isn't like you at all. Come on, let's go. Show me the way. Thank you for giving me a chance. Yeah. Hey, yo, she about to murder me? <laughs> <laughs> the treasure is along beside you as you head in the direction that Lana explained. At first, Shannon is silent, but silence so noisy that it tarts. <laughs> it really seems like, seems that weird to see you. Really seems weird to you to see me frown. Of course, you... you're never like this. That's where you're wrong, Betty. Oh. This is the real me. I just didn't want you to see it. I'm actually kind of shocked that you didn't try to force it out of me sooner. What are you trying to say? It seemed like when I smiled, you were able to smile too. That was enough for me. It was enough for me. I was always scared someone, someday you'd call me, call me out on it. Say, Shannon, you idiot. Quit pretending to smile. I know it isn't real. And maybe, just maybe, you tell me that it, that's okay. But I guess I'm better, I'm a better actress than I thought. Maybe I should drop out of school and move to Hollywood. Whoa, what are you saying? I don't understand. I was too selfish to keep up the facade at forever. I wish that I could just keep on smiling forever and ever. Ridiculous, huh? You must hate me so much right now. Don't even joke about that. I'd never hate you. What caught off guard though? I didn't realize you were bottling this much up. You try to smile, but it leaves a pit in your stomach. Not even the beauty of today's sunset I can raise the thing Shannon was saying. Why? Why didn't you ever talk to me about it? Why did- Huh? You always kept your saddest moments se secret from me. I had to pry it out all- I had to pry it all out of you. That's different. I didn't want you to be weighed down along with me. I want you to be able to keep smiling without the burdens of my problems. It's not different at all. It's exactly why I didn't tell you, because your smile <laughs> is the brightest thing in the whole world. I don't see it nearly enough. I wanted to keep seeing it as often as I could. I'm so sorry that it made you feel like you had to be fake around me. Me too. I'm sorry too. Shannon takes a few steps forward, 
Find a clean spot amidst the flowers to set. She taps the ground to come here, sort of gesture. Well. Just look, just look at this place. I thought that cafe earlier was the definition of small town charm. But this? Amazing. Lana suggested it. It seemed like she has a lot of memories here. She's the sort of person who keeps things to herself too, isn't she? I don't know about that. She's been pretty open about her problems at work and the way she struggled after she moved to Pokemon. I bet that's only half of it though. You can tell you can't tell that about her so easily. From science classes a klutz. Mm -hmm. And Sherry from gym class has really bad asthma. That's why she disappears halfway through sometimes. Charlie's so ab absent minded that he mi misses obvious details really easily. The fact that he noticed you on the street that day was practically a miracle. Your dad is gruff and doesn't show his emotions, like, at all. He's the definition of poorly adjusted. Clive isn't even just shy. He's the awkwardest guy ever. That boy won't even take off his hood because he, because he's clearly got the self-esteem issues of a person carrying a lot of baggage around with him. Lana has beer in the fridge, but she says she doesn't drink. She probably had a problem with alcohol in the past and keeps it in there too as a test. You, Patty. She turns to face you, staring with her look that pierces through your soul. You have a tra traumatic past, and you can't let go. You think you hide it well, but really you just look sad. Like a sad, lonely little kid, like a crush under the weight of their burdens. And me. I don't even remember when I started doing this. At some point, I realized everyone wanted me to be perfect Shannon Le Fay. And so I... I started collecting a mental list of the flaws everyone else had. That way, I could avoid showing them the worst of themselves. That way, I... Her face falls, eye contact breaking, and a bitter smile spreading across her face. I'd look good. You sit in a stone silence for some time as the sunlight grows dim. Hey, you're shivering. Is everything okay? What? Is it because of what I said? Do you hate me? Now that you know how horrible I can be? No, I promise. It's not that. I can never, ever hate you. Not in a million years. You're always going to be my best friend. Nothing will change that. Then, what is it? Maybe we should go back now. Huh? Didn't Lana, uh, didn't Lana say that it's best under the night sky? She did, but I just... Breathing deeply, getting your courage. I'm not too sure about walking in the dark. Eddie, this is Pirathon, not the city. I don't any I doubt any old people are gonna pop out of the shadows. It says it's but a hint of teasing, but it only serves to worry you more. Is Pirathon really a safe people say? So quiet that no one even noticed two creepy men dragging a young person into the alleyway in broad daylight. I thought you'd... I thought you loved nighttime walks. Yeah, before I learned a murderous monster is out to kill me. Anna grips her hands and looks into her eyes, picking, desperate for you to finally open up to her. What's wrong? It's... And don't say you're just cold. You're shivering too much for that. 
The shadows beneath every bush, the terrible nightmares. It all comes racing back when the man crosses your mind. Come on, please. I think you promised me I'd get some answers right about now. Alright. Shannon, listen carefully. I think there's someone out there who wants to kill. Take a deep breath and try to subdue your shivering. Damn it. I don't know how to mention first. Jasper's inf inf intentions or the reasons behind them. Does she even believe their reason? I'm getting paranoid because someone wants me dead. The words spill out in a stutter. That explains a lot. You don't think I'm making it up? You're not the sort of person who jokes around about this sort of thing. Of course. That would explain why you suddenly up and vanish from this city in the middle of the school year. And the attack that happened that night. I thought it was a random mugging, but it wasn't random, was it? That's why I didn't tell anyone where I went. Even you. Oh my god. No wonder you freaked out when Charlie found out where you live. Oh crap. Petty, I really messed up. I told Dustin where you are too. I know. That creep had some weird men after me. He cornered me on the way back home from the cafe. I wanted to chase after you right after you left, but he... Are you hurt? No, I think he just wanted to scare me away from you. His brother was there too. A guy named Troy. He asked me to bring Aristotle to you. Jesus, this is a lot to process. Have you gone to the police? It's complicated. Let's go home right now, okay? It glances around as if checking that everything is safe. I feel a rush of guilt. Maybe you should have waited until you were safe home before opening up. Come on, we can talk at home. Nearly a second that you're safe and sound, Shannon scoops you into her arms in a tight hug. I've been acting so selfish. I can't believe I was all worried about dumb stuff while you were carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. Can you say that so readily? I've barely done any explaining. Shannon suddenly squeezes your arm while a kid nuzzles into her happily and falls to sleep. Elise is calm about all this. You must look like a mess. What would I do without you? You'd be terribly, horribly lost, I'm afraid. Petty, you really need to get someone else involved. The police could help. What? If you're scared to do it alone, I'll come with you. I'm sure Lana would too. You clam up on her well-intentioned suggestions. I want to protect, but the words won't come out. She drops her hand and moves it over to Aristotle to stroke his hairs. I have a feeling she needs to come for the kid in right now more than he does. Are you Don't raising your card? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Are you raising your guard again? She's desperate to read some lines. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to, believe me. I guess you're right. I think we've got plenty off our chest for tonight. I trust you re to return the favor tomorrow. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. You better not betray that trust. Never. Thank you. I feel a little guilty that your open and honest session has been cut short. You can't protest. If she's okay with it, you won't turn down and offer to rush back to the safety of Lana's bedroom. Let's see. 
let's get your sleepy little head up to bed. You'll feel better after a good rest. I sure hope so. <laughs> we haven't had a really intense heart-to-heart -heart like this in so long. I wonder what's, what it is about Pirithon that brings us together like this. Pirithon is sort of weird. You grew closer to Shannon and Pirithon even when you were younger too. But that was not what struck us all about this place. Oh my neck. <laughs> Break that back for me girl. <laughs> That's the f wait, is that the first time we've seen a year? What does that say? Oh, who's that? Charlie. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, huh? who are you reading? Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Shannon. Shannon, where'd you go? Boo. Uh, did you just fall from the sky? Are you? I wish being able to fly with big poofy wings would be so cool. But nah, I just climbed that tree. You should have seen the look on your face when I landed in front of you. Mmm, Shannon. Time is already over. The teacher is super duper mad that you didn't meet up with everyone. I think she's gonna call your mama and tell on you for breaking the rules. If you're so worried about getting in trouble, what are you- what are you doing here? <laughs> Looking for you, because... Mm, if Shannon gets in trouble, then she shouldn't get in trouble all alone. We both get to be yelled at together now. Ah, uh, I'm so lucky. I have the bestest twin brother in the whole wide world. Come on, let's go catch frogs by the pond. Just to, just to state for clarity, they are not twins. No, it's almost coloring time. What would you, what would you rather do? Color another dinosaur, or go catch a super extra mega big frog with me? Mm, big. Big enough that he's practically a dinosaur. Mmm, well... Shannon, Charlie, there you two are. I've been worried sick. Ah, uh, you took too long to decide, Poofy. Oh well, we'll go frog hunting at after school instead. Don't be late, Charlie. Mmm, <laughs> I won't. The sheer number of coincidences here is strange. This is just a town I visited once or twice as a kid to go to the beach. But it's also where Lana moved, where Clive grew up, where Shannon's childhood friend Charlie lives. And in that run in with Jasper, too. How did he find me here in the first place? There is one thing that you know for sure Shannon deserves everything. I wish you could give her the whole world. Guys, based on what fractured your friendship with Shannon, only truth can mend it. But how much truth can I reveal? You never dream anymore. The night that Kay visited you in your sleep, the closest thing that you've had to them. Only nightmares plug your sleep. The theater inside your mind begins to play each night, but every film it plays is a horror. You're forever condemned to remain present. Why do so many of these night terrors seem to revolve around water lately? When you open your eyes, you find yourself submerged in some dark place beneath the surface of the ocean. You can move, but you can't progress. Your body is fixating in place, and your focus turned to the darkness that lurks just below you. You can't 
invert that focus. If you try to look elsewhere, you can draw back as if you missed something of a grave importance. If you keep staring and waiting. How long have you been down here? How long have you been here until your lungs give up and you need more air? A quick glance that you manage to make towards the surface before your eyes are magnetically drawn back into place isn't enough to tell you how deep you are or how far you need to swim to reach fresh air. Someone else is here. I can feel it. A menacing aura shoots down from the depths. As if by instinct, your eyelids shut and you scorch the darkness for a silhouette to read. You erupt into a scream. All your air is lost and must you creep at the silhouette that fills you with sheer horror approaching you. It feels like the presence of someone who shouldn't exist. You are not here. Not yet. You are not here. I sure as hell wish I wasn't here. I can't breathe. Suffocation. An invisible grip trying to keep you still. Moment up above you. You don't know what to focus on first. Grip loosens and you swim desperately upwards while thrashing your hands, choking, gagging on the full lasting water. The glow of the surface above seems to be getting more distant. And someone else reaching out. Not yet. Be patient. I feel like the strange shadow hand is beckoning you to instantly you reach out towards it. I didn't know it was you, and I put a stop to this a long time. It erupts in your blurry vision. So a lot of a monster with horns that goes over everything else. Eddie. You can't reply to one of thing calling your name. The voice seems to be coming from the monster, but you're confused and disoriented. Everything is going black. You guys want to stop here or want to keep going? Uh, oh my god, we've been going for like six, five, six hours. <laughs> huh? We've been going for like five, six hours. Okay, technically, you guys have been going for four hours. <laughs> well, five to four. That's why I'm asking, do you guys want to stop or continue? Um, oh. Great answers. <laughs> I mean, like, for me, it's like, you can do either or, like... I mean, we can keep going or we can stop here, like, for okay, me. but I'm asking you, how are you feeling? <laughs> Not sure. No, I'm doing good, though. So, you say you want to keep going? Yeah, I'm sure. Tones, what about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm alright. Uh, Maple? <laughs> oh, no. Have we lost Maple? I think so. Oh, Maple! <laughs> I don't think she here is. But Maple, an but answer the question before you go. Oh wait, can you can hear us still? Do you want to keep going, or are you gonna be dropping out? No. Oh. Oh. Um, we're we're having 
Technical difficulties. <laughs> you guys in your bedtime story. Oh, he was about to go to sleep to this. You want to listen to our bedtime story that is kind of happy, kind of not? Okay, since she can't hear us anymore, let me just add her. Okay, English. <laughs> English is hard, man. Okay, excuse us while we, uh, figure this out. <laughs> oh, please don't fall asleep. I mean, please. <laughs> oh my god, Mabel, you're alive. Turned off for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good now? I'm I'm good. We're we're storying too hard. <laughs> Can we cut Maple's power? Um, the last time we took a break was at like four hours, right? You guys need another break or are you good? I am good. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. good. And like I said, I'm just asking because like, I, I know it's a lot. Maybe you want to like rest your voice for a little bit. Maybe take a... Five minutes? Five, five minutes? minutes? Video break. Yeah. Video break. A little Somewhere. Break? <laughs> Video break. <laughs> it sounds like Maple needs to fix some stuff. <laughs> uh, everything's back, so I am okay. good. But if just you guys have a guys little bit of a voice break, minutes, then you know we can. It is nobody gonna take the five minutes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we can just chill out and not, not, not talk. <laughs> okay. Five minutes of dead silence. Let's go. Wow. Okay, so... It looks like we're going to be continuing. You guys might put me to sleep while I'm shiny hunting. <laughs> uh, I, I promise we're not trying to, but... Aww. But yeah, I hope we haven't been putting you guys to sleep or boring you at all. And yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves right now. I know it's a lot. Yeah, we're just gonna take like a, a five minute rest. No, we will be getting back to the bedtime story. Don't worry, Ninja. Don't worry. Just a little quick break.
I do want to rest my voice a little bit. I have been talking for like oh, six and a half hours now.
<laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Here, let me turn off my sound thing. Freaking Discord. Uh, no sound suppression. A la, a la. Yeah, it's not sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's good. I don't think it matters. The maker didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know it's. Uh, people say it's it's more cute than. Um, it doesn't than sexy. have to be sexy. Okay. It's... Naja, you do one. You do one. <laughs> no. <laughs> Fair answer. Naja, I will give you. A gift sub right <laughs> no, I will Bruh. give you a gift and sub. She's not even an affiliate yet. <laughs> right? I don't even have sub. Nice try though. <laughs> Trying to buy an R R. I need to blow my nose. Wait, hold up. Okay. Excuses. Okay. okay, we have to figure out what we what we can offer her so she can do it. Um, Great ideas. <laughs> I get, I'm thinking. I don't know. Um. Okay. I think I got one. <laughs> it would probably be a no, though. Hmm. <laughs> Great. <laughs> great, great idea. Mm -hmm. I feel like she's purposely withholding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fair. Not many people would willingly do an ah uh, ah. Uh. Sure. In the meantime, don't you do one? <laughs> <laughs> you would willingly do an ah uh, ah. Uh. Oh hell yeah! Are you kidding me? Alright, <laughs> oh, willingly. Do it. Ah uh, ah. Uh. Speechless. Awesome. <laughs> Left the of kind speechless. Of speechless you're looking at. Mm -mm. Okay, but we, we technically can't continue without Naja though, so. Mm -hmm. Did she break her nose while blowing her nose? <laughs> <laughs> yes, my Pass nose out. definitely broke. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, Naja. I have an offer. In exchange? <laughs> For an ara, ara. What do you mean? You get to have me to yourself for an entire day. Bro. No. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Shut down. No. Dang. Alright, well. I guess we continue. Dang. Nadja, do you have a throne? <laughs> I will buy no. you one thing off your forehead, by the way. Damn, don't really want one. Don't buy it, no. We all did one. Yeah. For record. Yeah. Come on, Naja, just, just well, one. Well, it sucks to be you because I don't give in to peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> good, good on you, Naja. <laughs> Dream. <sighs> Dang. So, so if I like, like you a 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 I'll stop. Let's go, let's go. Oh, Betty. The grotesque scream of last night terror ships. At first, you can hardly process the change. Why does the monster sound so much like Shannon? 
fucked up. Ah. You jolt awake and lurch forward into an upright position. Owie, ow, ow. Your forehead explodes with pain and you yelp in surprise and so does another voice along inside your... The sleepy hassock starts melting in response to the familiar voice. Sheesh, you dummy. You look to the side of her kneeling over side of the bed, rubbing her forehead with a... The fuck is a wince? So that was the source of the pain. Give your own forehead a rub while she gives you a clumsy smile halfway between pain and amusement. You don't know what a wince is? No. Oh god. You sweet. Shit, are you okay? Totally fine. Guess that's my punishment for leaning over you while you're sound asleep. <laughs> I feel like I did I didn't know your face was that hard. Bleh, mean. You know what's so funny? Shannon really sounds like Mabel. <laughs> Like, you guys can't tell me you weren't thinking about it, come on. <laughs> Believe me, yours ain't exactly a pillow either. Settling back against the wall, you chuckle at her. Thank goodness she woke me up from that terrible nightmare. Yep. It's definitely gonna leave a bump. Please the two of you will match. Look at your bedroom window. The sun looks down to be a different angle today now and you've gotten used to seeing up and waking. Well, thanks to Shannon, I actually met one time, huh? Never thought you'd see the day where the girl who loved to sleep until noon is the reason you don't sleep in. Mirror. What? One more time, Maple? Oh. Were you having a nightmare? Yeah. Thank goodness you woke me up from that awful place. Move your big old butt over. Yo, my butt ain't big. <laughs> <laughs> So shooting you off on the other side of the bed, Shannon curls up next to you with a grin. Restoro quickly takes up the opportunity to join in on the snuggles. Smile back at her without much effort. Brightness has returned to her expression too. It's a weight off your shoulders for her to be, it, to be able to look at you in the eye again, and it clears away the dreadful storm clouds from your internal sky. How about you? Well... Yep, no night, no nightmares on my end. Shadow of the nightmare recedes further as Shannon embraces you, softening your smile as you pat her blonde hair. Can't believe they nearly pushed her away in the aftermath of the bizarre occurrences in the last few days. Could you ever survive without Shannon? Well, well, look at Captain Popularity getting alerts before even I do. It's Probably Clive. He can wait until later. It's okay. Go ahead and answer it. You sure? Definitely. I have a question. <laughs> well, good morning to you too. Sorry. Hello. I have a question. Dear God. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say this is not true. <laughs> Ask away. So, do you know the feel of flowers just a little way out of town? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I was just there last night. What do you want? <laughs> Looks like that field. Wait. <laughs> I can't even read. <laughs> it's like 
that flower field is a hot spot around here. I think he's asking you on a date? Ew, no way. Hey, you always say his last night a date. Yeah, was last night not a date? Hey, yo. Was that not the start of the relationship? Okay, Clive. I highly doubt that. Sorry. Teddy, he's literally asking you to go frolic through the flowers with him. Hmm. Does that mean last night was a date too? Uh. No. That was totally different. <laughs> If you say mm -hmm. so, you want to meet up there? How did you know? <laughs> Never could have guessed! I'm kind of obvious when you ask about it out of nowhere. Oh. Yeah, can you? What time? I have some things to do first. Uh, so we could go there now? This guy. You can go. I don't mind. I was planning to spend the morning finally getting some explaining done for you. She pushes her forward into your hair, burying her face in it. I trust you to make the wait worthwhile. In that case, why don't you come too? Me? He invited you. So what? I'd rather have my adorable pal Shannon with me. Aw, you're so sweet sometimes. Alright, if you insist, then I promise to be the best third wheel you could ever ask for. <laughs> Shut up, you <laughs> dork. You're never a third wheel. <laughs> Lana's relief is written crystal clear on her face when she sees you and Shannon talking like usual again. Lana practically inhales the minimalist breakfast of buttered toast, saying she has to go to work early again today, apologizing profusely and telling you to behave as she's doing her mother's of two little children before she runs out the door. Shoot a quick text to your dad to let him know that everyone's safe. He responds back with a simple K type of reply that makes it hard to read what his thoughts is on the matter. The storm has passed. Everyone can sense it. Perhaps even him. But there's a nagging thought in the back of your mind. Why hasn't Jasper made another move? I'm sorry. I blanked. Oh my god. Suppose I really did dream that whole thing up? I don't think I could ever get used to living in a place like this. How are the streets always so empty? Uh, you think this is empty? At least there's some people around today. True. Last evening, it looked like a graveyard, but... It turns on her heel. I made a view of the neighborhood through her hands like a photographer. It actually looks like a pretty chill place to hang. After a few minutes of brisk walking, your nail at the edge of Parafon where the grass field starts. Sudden expanse of nature is overwhelming in a delightful way, making the morning feel refreshing even with the sun glaring hotter after yesterday's rain. Check it out. This, even this place is beautiful. You were not even at the flowers yet. I can't believe something like this is practically right outside of Lana's house. If I lived with you guys, I'd come here every single day. And I bet you'd drag me along with you. Darn right I would. This place wouldn't be half as beautiful without my bestie by, at my side. As you cross the grass toward the flowers, building comes more sparse, trees taking over in their place.
I don't know the area well yet, but it seems far enough distance from the beach. You are interested in a natural trail. Use that as a leverage to push away the remaining anxiety is still at home in your mind. Diana doesn't remember. Lana doesn't remember. Clive doesn't remember. Hell, even Shannon's father doesn't remember. Are Jasper and Rampa with all of those memories, or are you missing something? Oops. I didn't mean to startle you. You looked a bit spaced out again. I'm bad. I'm fine. Don't mind me. Betty, I know I said I wouldn't pester you about it, but... I know. I get it. You were right. As soon as things are settled down, I'll find someone I can talk to about this. That's my petty. Don't worry. You got big, strong Shannon here to protect you from harm. I wouldn't let anything happen to you. You let Shannon link her arm for yours without any protests. If anything, you're sure you'd be one of the protests, sir. The calming effect that she emits is enough to make you feel safer. Both of you have to stop us there in bewilderment. Neither of you were good enough spirits to fully appreciate the majesty of the place yesterday. Butterflies that match the colors of the flowers flit from one spot to the next. It's mesmerizing. Think it'd be okay to pick some? Please don't. Hey, we were just looking for you. Jenna waits enthusiastically as Clive joins to meet up with you. His face is tinged red, either from the heat from his usual nervousness, the miracle we can breathe in this heat with his head covered in his signature red hood. Uh, hey, you brought Shannon with you. Well, sheesh, try not to sound too excited. N no, that I, I didn't mean. I was surprised because Petty said you were going home yesterday. There is some nice rubber. What? <laughs> there is some nice weather we're having. <laughs> the awkwardly cut off Clive's rambling, making Shannon feel like the fire wheel is not what she needs right now. Don't worry, I'll be good. No more touching your hoodie this time. Not without permission, at least. Oof, tough crowd lately, huh? This is beyond tense. Clement is only agitated by Shannon's presence. Uh, my bad. I didn't mean to be worried about it. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you guys think of this place? <laughs> What a Greek in the game! <laughs> it's beautiful. I have I've never seen so many hydrangeas in one place before. Right. My shoulder seems to relax when Shannon says that. Actually, my favorite place. Oh, actually, my favorite place here. These flowers have been growing around this spot for as long as I can remember. Hard to imagine someone like you coming out for strolls at a local at the local flower garden. Uh, well, what can I say? I'm full of surprises. The timing was perfect. Ben and I were actually planning to come here last night. What? At night? Are you crazy? There are plenty of street lamps around. And Lana suggested it. She said this place is the most beautiful under the stars. We didn't stay that long, but... Still, this place is... Don't you realize where it is? Outside of... <laughs> Your thought? I meant... Uh... Oh, that's right. Clive is one of the... Is the one who found Petty last that night. Let me guess, you were worried about them wandering outside after 
What happened? Don't worry, they weren't alone this time. No, I... <laughs> Wait, hold on. Is that Jasper? Yes. I believe he's referring to how close this spot is to my lovely home. Uh, it was a trap! The familiar voice makes you freeze without any need for some mutant powers. Oh. Oh, God. A friend of Clive's? So you turn- Oh. Jeez. <laughs> I hate when I do that. <laughs> As you turn to face him, your body's movements slow and mechanical. Janet and Clive do the same. Eyes are cold despite his smile. Old and cunning, like a wolf preparing to pounce on its next meal. Nope. No. No, 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 no. Wait, you look familiar. Does she remember now that she's seen his face? Hmm. Where was it? Right, at the grocery store. You stood out because you were shopping all, all dressed... All dressed to the nines, remember, P Petty? Eddie? I'm having an out of body experience right now. What? It has been far too long, hasn't it? You're beginning to miss me. I don't know. Are you being a bit rude? You won't even introduce me to this sweet little girl. This is Shannon, a friend of Patty. Five. Yes. His head is downcast, eyes averted, hoodie obscuring his face. You can sense it all the way from here. Here. He seems nearly as frozen with it as you are. Shannon. Hmm. A pleasure. Pleasure. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Jasper. His hand extends forward and Shannon moves in to shake it. Close contact between them is what manages to move you from the spot you've been glued to. Shannon, don't touch him. You, stay back. Don't get any closer to her. Mm, why? Do you suppose what happened if I touch your friend? I don't know, but I'm warning you. Don't you dare hurt Shannon. Heard, Shannon. Oh, pity. I will never do such a thing. Fire? Who are you? Damn it, Shannon. Brain didn't register the fact that you stopped trembling at first, but now you understand. You can't tremble. Frozen. Humans really do have such interesting minds, limited in capacity, but in the best way possible. That's why they're so wonderful. Are you calling me stupid? Don't take it as an insult. Stupid would be far more fitting word for you, don't you think, Clive? What are you doing here? Oh, come on. The gig is up. No need to play pretend anymore. Now, be a good boy and let me handle the rest. Okay. But, Ken is here. What are you thinking? <laughs> so what? Isn't it about time she learns the truth? Even in your frozen state, tears have begun streaming from your eyes. I've... That scheming piece of... You... Set me up. No, listen, I... Don't touch me. Don't come near me. Petty, I didn't know. Bullshit. You were there. You... I have this all wrong. I have saved me both times. So if his memory was manipulated like Shannon's... I'm sorry. I didn't know anything about you at first. I just... 
did what was supposed what I was supposed to do. Hmm? He's done yelling at me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bella just came yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Petty. Enough wishful thinking. This explains all those bullshit coincidences. <laughs> Petty, if you'll let me explain it all from the beginning, you'll understand. Ooh. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Neither Jasper nor Clyde, not even you, were prepared for it as Shannon leaps for it and fiercely shoves Clive. Had he accounted for Shannon's stupid bravery, he'd have been able to block her. Caught off guard, he staggers backward and falls down with a surprise thud. Are you deaf? They said not to touch them. I've got no idea what the hell is going on, but if you hurt Petty... <laughs> <laughs> you think are hilarious. I was completely right about you, Shannon. You're perfect. No idea what's going on, but your desire to protect your friend is all you need to leap into battle. Fascinating. Don't you dare flirt with me. Flirt. Don't gonna be conceited. And don't piss him off. The determination in her eyes is unflinching. What's your game here, huh? Who really are you? I think you misunderstood. I just want to have a little chat with you, dear bestie. Chat? I knew it. I knew you'd change her- change your- Oh my god. I'm sorry, I'm- I'm so doubting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh god, I'm sorry. Shannon's fierceness and Clyde's spot hope resolve instantly when Jasper's hand flicks to his belt and then back into view in a swift movement. The knife in his hand. It's likely the same one he attacked you with last time. Getting sick of this. A knife. I knew it. You are. Yes, yes. The same one that attacked one in the city. Blah, blah, blah. Congratulations. You figured it out. Anna, run. She can still move. There's still time for her to get out of here before he freezes her in place, too. Didn't you hear me? I said run. I can't leave you. Petty is right. You should. Shut up, you dumb coward. <sighs> oh, Shannon, I can't sense your fear, but come on. Take it easy. It isn't me you should fear, it's the monster standing next to you who's been wearing a disguise of humanity all this time. Shut up. I'm not the one who goes around kidnapping people and fucking with their memories. Just get this over with already. Fucking with her. Kidnapping? Altering memories? I'm not the murderer here. You are. And... and you. I guess that your memory loss was a part of your act, Clive. Another lie to make me think I could trust you. Clive? What are you? I was really starting to, you know? I, I was really turning into a stupid fool. Congrats, you almost had me. It makes my skin crawl just thinking about how I tried to confide in you when... when you were... finger. Years. It flowed forth in tandem. And you were only thinking about how you could shove that knife into my chest. No. Yes, you got it. In fact, it was my idea to befriend you in the first place. Please don't say it. Why not? But I'm some padded up with some hope that you're on their side. Poor 
boring, 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 boring. Death with the hope that the original summer's face is so, so, so boring. Come on, Clive, admit it. Isn't it fun to see this type of expressions on their face? Told me so yourself. Their bare shoulder emotions. So isn't it fun to finally get a taste of what they've been hiding underneath that facade? You're right. Do I really look that inhuman? There might be no escape from your fate after all. Perhaps Jasper was right. Perhaps it is his destiny to kill you. But not Shannon. He can have you. He can't have her. Please, I'll give in without fighting. Just let Shannon go. It's not like I want to kill you, double. That goes for Shannon, too. Then why are you doing I have to remove this mutant before everyone suffers. Tin? No, this isn't how I want her to find out. I'm sorry, Shannon. This, this is what I've been trying to find the words to tell you about. What does that mean? It means I... Means you're a monster. Enough of this. The sooner I end this, the sooner we will all be free. Jasper coils his knife, arm backwards, and prepares to slash. Unable to move, all you can do is watch as the scene plays out before you. That's what they call having your life flash before your eye. You can see Shannon's keeping expression and hear her scream. You can see Jasper's merciless expression as he aims for your throat. Oh shit. <laughs> you can see an eruption of red in front of your eyes. Wait, that isn't blood. That's... Stop! Clive plants his left foot firmly on the ground between you and Jasper and unwinds his right leg. The kick is clumsy and probably wouldn't have landed at all if it weren't for Jasper's arm already being in motion, slamming directly into Clive's shoe. The knife flies from his grasp while Jasper cries out in pain and shock. Aftermath leaves three of Jasper's fingers dangling awkwardly from the impact. Ooh. What the hell? Don't send it back. He broke his fingers? Cut it out already. Just listen to me for once. I know you don't want to do this. You can lie to yourself all you want, but you can't lie to me anymore. Love, you filthy traitor. What do you think you're doing? You're wrong about everything. I've watched them. They're not a monster. Damn it, you fool. You're weak. You're weak all those fears ago when you're still weak now. <laughs> Have you already forgotten what was the vile creatures are capable of? But I love not Jasper Oi. <laughs> <laughs> Have you already forgotten that your name isn't even Jasper? <gasps> it's Jorge! <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's not your name! I don't know why you took it from me, but I want it back! <laughs> What happening? <laughs> I don't understand what happened during that time that you changed that changed you this much. Father would Quiet. Piercing shriek that emits from Jasper's mouth would have made you flinch were you not frozen. Just stop, please. Neither of you have to do any of this. <laughs> oh, really? You don't? 
you telling me you'd be okay if living in reality where the world is moments away from collapse, where the action of one single monster could fuck it up for everyone? Creatures you read about so fondly in fiction should stay on the pages of the books. This isn't the cruel, hopeless mission that causes the death of one freak. This is for the future, for humankind, for the sake of normalcy. And you, Shannon. I have to thank you too. You've given a help, great help to this endeavor, endeavor alongside Clive, after all. Liar. What have I done to help you? You're a monster. Oh, don't worry. I already know that. As a word of her, Jasper turns to your frozen frame again. Come now, doll. Let's put an end to this. No. I like the cat and mouse. And it doesn't run despite your pleading. You're still unable to move. Right now, it feels like your brain is drowning. You can practically see the blue of an ocean preparing to pull you under. But Clive, that stuttering coward who led you to this ambush in the first place, stands in front of him, venting his approach. You hardly register the struggle going on in front of you. It's a blur. A loud, noisy blur. This feels like one of those nightmares where you've lost control of your body. You're a separate entity living inside of Eddie's frame. Shannon speaks vague, muffled words through the ringing that takes root. Only half of them reach your ears. You know he's lying, right? I don't understand anything he said, but I'd never help him. I'd never betray you. I'd rather die than... Of course you know that. You trust Shannon from the core of your soul. Jasper is just playing with your heads. But it's that last set of words that makes the world dim around you completely. Rather die? You can't let that happen. You're losing control of your body, like one of those nightmares where you're forced to watch from above as horrific things take place, hopelessly unable to prevent it. Jasper has managed to overpower Clive with ease. Shannon shouts something to you, a warning maybe, but a ringing in your ears drowns out her voice. Your thumb, small, quiet, hear the commotion. Not even you hear it anymore. The vision dims. This must be it. This is the end. <laughs> Petty? It's as if a grenade was detonated and everything around you was caught in a shockwave. Even with the horrible noise, though, your last thought is crystal clear. Don't let Shannon get hurt. Your vision slowly returns. Sky, that's the first thing you see. Don't drop yourself up groggily. You move. Oh. Oh. Take in the scene in front of you. Jasper flaps on the ground with blood pouring from his mouth. His ears. Five, a few paces away from him. They stained with red as well. So noticeably less jam- Less damage than Jasper. Shannon, cowering, sobbing, but... You okay? No, of course I'm not. I mean, are you hurt? No. Thank goodness. Even to Jasper and Clive, did... Did I do that? The ringing is gone now, like it exploded out of you. Shannon blinks like times to clear her sight. You almost wish she wouldn't. Her eyes fall on the bloody Ivan Jasper, she gasps. God. I think you can. She nods, shaking. We need to get out of here while he's still unconscious. Glad said Clive. Ideally, I'd like to take him with you as well. But you're not as strong as yet. You can't make it back while carrying Clive's pastel body on your back. And. 
I didn't need to right now. Can't let her go back alone. Hmm. I'd say let's leave him. <laughs> you guys leave him behind. Leave? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Petty brings up a good point. She can't. He, she can't carry him and. Naja, it, you want to leave it, him too? Yeah, I would agree with that. Damn. <laughs> Y'all said. <laughs> Y'all said. Leave him I mean, do you want to try and wake him first? <laughs> no. Good and safety needs to come first right now. Come on. Yeah. Wait. I'm sorry, that was <laughs> not my line. You my line. <laughs> I mean, you can say it now if you want. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh god. Oh, we're having fun here. Jenna doesn't seem to be injured, but she's so dazed that she's barely responsive. Jenna isn't home when you return, probably for the best. You need time to calm Shannon down. And How can you calm someone down after that, though? After checking her over for wounds and finding none, Shannon cries in your arms until she passes out. All you can do is lay her down and in your bed and watch the sleep. I wish you could go back to when you were eight years old, back to your mom, back to Lana when she would cradle you on her lap and read you bedtime stories, back to peace and blissful ignorance, when you didn't know you were a freak. This constant fear, danger is too much. You're like a small prey animal being hunted at all hours of the day. You thought you could at least give Shannon one more happy day before she went home to the city, but you failed that too. You failed miserably. But you can't give up. Not yet. You have to stay strong. At least you have one answer you are seeking now. Why? Why? Why did Jasper keep you alive until now? You feel stupid for not seeing it before. Jasper wants you to break. He made that painfully clear. It isn't enough for you to die as a human. You need to die in despair. As a mutant. As a monster. Oh, let's see, where are we? Well, since we're back home. Naja, you're back to narrating. A dream of sleep is a welcome change from the norm. It has to prepare you for you for what you know will have to come next. Jenna sits beside Steel and Lana's couch. A ray of golden sunshine shows her, making a beautiful hair glow under its brightness. It's like an angel. An angel with a face fixed on yours, listening to what must seem like a fairy tale. So, Jasper is right. I'm a freak. You're allowed to hate me if you want. I won't blame you for it. There it is. Laying it bare on the table. You remain in silence for a long while while Shannon observes you. It hurts to wait for a response, wondering if you're going to lose the only person you always wanted to keep close. Are you really telling me the truth? Are you really telling me the truth? Oh shit. Oh wait, there's there there's for a second. <laughs> I am sorry, Shannon. Uh, wait, what? Why are you sorry? I'm a freak. And I'm sorry that you that you An instant, your tears are swept away by Shannon's gentle fingers as she takes your face into her hands. Freak? I could never see you as a freak. Don't ever say that about yourself. <laughs> Leo? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just listening and all you is where were Leo, you're not a freak. Uh, um, I can't help but stare at her in shock. Can't be funny. Shannon is so different from me in so many ways. 
She's not just popular because she's beautiful. It's because of her son and personality, the way she lights up in the room with her smile, how she always knows what to say to share someone up. But despite all that, you still find yourself doubting her. And with someone who has all that cares so much about you. I don't understand you, Shannon. You don't understand me. Because you don't understand yourself. What? I wish you could see yourself the way I do. You're so sure that everyone around you is judging you as harshly as you judge yourself. But that's not true. I don't see you as a freak, not before and not now either. And I never will. She releases your cheek, smooth to grip your hands in hers. She holds them with a firmness you don't typically expect from Shannon. You're so much more wonderful than you give yourself credit for. Go ahead, Maple. Is there nothing you could tell me that that'll make me hate you? Do you understand now, dummy? You can already feel the tears pouring out again. I understand. In the next order of business, you are not a monster or a freak. Stop lab labeling yourself with that, with what other people call you, okay? You're petty, my best friend. Got it? Got it. Now promise me that you'll never call yourself a monster or a freak ever again. Hey. Promise me. Right. I promise. I know it's scary to face this, but I need you to understand once and for all that you can lean on me. I'm not as fragile as you think. Before she can finish, a thought echoes from the front entrance. Both of you leap to your feet at once, clinging to each other in terror as footsteps approach. Don't still make me come through oh the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Mike was muted. Ah, there you are. Good. Well, why do you keep yourself muted? You. Me! Then <laughs> <laughs> instantly takes a step towards him. She looks about ready to shove him right back out the door, but. Shannon, wait. Grab your shoulder, Clive, and know that you are has the answers that you need right now. Please, we need to. We're all making this we. <laughs> There's no we. You stabbed Petty in the back. I know, and I'm sorry. Sorry? Do you not even know what you're apologizing for? You're just taking us back as much as Clive has. You've never seen Shannon so angry before in your entire life. It's like her face is boiling with rage. A little bunny suddenly turned rabbit. I'm sorry for... Are you sorry for planning to murder someone? Or you're sorry for betraying them? Or are you sorry for alluring them to a beautiful field of flowers only to practically announce that it will be their grave? What exactly are you sorry for, Clive? Mm -hmm. Unable to hold it back, the anger turns to tears. The strong Shannon that stood up for you a moment ago suddenly feels so frail. Hey, no, not until the. No, go ahead. Okay. He can't just pop back in a day late 
in a day later and act like nothing happened. Is your problem, Clyde? I didn't mean to. Don't interrupt me. I don't care what your reason was. They're hurting, and you caused it. I swear, I didn't think this is how it would happen. Because you don't. You don't think. I swear, if they're going, if they're, if they get hurt because of you, you're going to regret it. I know it's a little awkward. Right? <laughs> wait, Shannon, wait. Let's hear what he has to say. Why is everyone interrupting me? Do you seriously not understand why I'm pissed? Ugh, fine. Go on. Thank you. I appreciate your patience. Just shut up and get on with it. Okay, okay. I'll cut to the chase. I want to help you stop Jasper and... I think I have a plan. A plan, huh? Why the sudden chain of heart? You sent Petty up once already. And stop yourself halfway for interrupting her. She has a point after all. Well, I may be your best chance when it comes to dealing with Jasper. As much as you'd like to trust him, you simply can't. Not that easily, at least. Not when his last betrayal put not just you, but Shannon in danger, too. I deserve that, I guess. There's really nothing I can do to even bring... Be, begin making it up to you both. Darn right there isn't. I know it's no excuse, but at the time, I really believed him. I thought he was right about everything. Yes, but I really want to know why. When I met you in that s in the city, Petty, I was different. I can't explain it, but the time that we spent hanging out together, it it changed me. There's so much more to you than he had me believe. Hell, you even made a guy like me feel like maybe. We could be friends. He looks at you with such heartbreaking sincerity that despite everything suggested by common sense and survival instinct, you want to believe him. Life said things back there that you can't get out of your head. Jasper's name isn't really Jasper, but he took it from Clive. You can't even begin to understand what brought Clive to Jasper in the first place. So many questions. Why though? If you help him, brain fart. <laughs> if you helped him at first, fine, but you did it again. It wasn't just me; you almost killed. Him. I could have gotten hurt too. Again. The voice bubbles a bit as finally let out some of the stress. The last few days have been accumulated into. Soft fingers into Wayne through, your, through yours, tightening in a confident squeeze. You gave Shannon a small smile of thanks. It feels like it's some of her warmth is flowing into you through that touch and grounding you in place. Again? Oh. So telling the truth after all? Don't say you really not remember what happened? Close your eyes and let the scene fade away into darkness. Actually focusing on Clive, you try to get a read on him. You've grown to hate your powers a lot of ways, but... At first, all that you can see is an overwhelming darkness. A red glow is all that separates that from complete nothingness. Concentrate a few moments longer and... Guilt seems to emanate out of him like a heavy bed of waves. It takes a moment to recover from the shock of it before the colors are finally clear. Red. 
Soul Silhouette is a different shades of red. Is your interpretation right? There's no way it's only good. Colors must be more complex than that. So, you're relieved when you release the breath that you didn't even realize you were holding. It's not lying. You're sure of that much. But on the other hand, you were hoping that it would be able to reassure you that you aren't going to be completely insane. No such luck. It is really only you who remembers the kidnapping. Never mind. Um, okay. About yesterday. Shannon wasn't supposed to be there. I already felt awful about leaving you there. Petty. But when I saw how you defended her, you were ready to sacrifice yourself for her. And I was certain Jasper was wrong. A monster couldn't do something like that. His first clinch was his sides, but the guilt in his eyes is not mixed with determination. Yeah, I can get the boy out. Yeah, go. Do we trust him? <laughs> but, a, but, a, but, a, but a hug implies you trust him. No hug. What time is it? Uh, it's like 8.27 for me. Bro, shut up. It's like 9.27 for you. You may want to hug him? No. 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 <laughs> no, you don't want to hug him either. Do you want to hug him, Nadja? I mean, I could give him a hug, but like, I feel like it would be better to just say we trust him. You guys are so cold. Do you want to hug him? Yeah. You're the person- you're a controller here. Oh, well, well, I guess we're all in agreement then. <laughs> oh. <laughs> guess we're not in agreement here. No. Come here. Uh. Uh, and don't say anything stupid. I just can't take it when you stupid and sad. Climb down swiftly in the embrace. Just as you are about to pull away from the awkwardness, though, you feel Shannon joining in on the group hug. Ah, uh, come on, Petty. You can't do that to me. That's totally unfair. You know I'm awful at staying angry. What? Enough pouting. Um... <laughs> I can wait for him to face red if Clive takes a few steps back. Ha ha ha, that's enough of that. I'll say. Does that mean you forgive me, Shannon? Hmm, I guess. For now, I'll be watching you. I'll be watching you though. Don't think you're getting off the hook that easily. Even though she says it, you can feel both her and Clive relax around you. You can trust each time to heal though, and it can't be mended with just one conversation. One hug. Especially <laughs> when that broken trust nearly ended in tragedy. No, the three of you are not good yet. Far from it. But at least you're hope hopeful that eventually you may be. Uh, how are you guys feeling? Tired. Tell us mm -hmm. how you're feeling. I, I think I gotta make some food. Nausea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sleepy. Alright, we can call it here. <laughs> well, I might stream a little bit. Okay. You've been streaming for seven hours. Seven and a okay. half hours. What is your point? Are you not tired too? <laughs> tired. 
can't tell. <laughs> Your PNG. It's a little difficult to tell. Anyway. Well, let's give a round of applause for our wonderful players today. We have Maple Aurelia, Tatones, and Naja Bloom. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Congratulations! And these wonderful <laughs> people are about to leave to go do stuff, whether that's eating or resting. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys want to um, shout anything out before I uh, mute you? Uh, I'm probably going to have another collab with the true Orions on Wednesday. Oh, outside nice. Of that, outside of that, I might play more Stardew. Or something. Naja, anything? Mm, I mean, like, we're gonna have a podcast on Monday instead of tomorrow. Continuing JoJo's. <gasps> and Maple. Yeah, follow me or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. I love you, Maple. <laughs> Good job, Maple. Keep it safe. All right, you are now officially muted. Yeah. Book, I told you guys to get out when you needed to. Okay, guys. Um, like I said, I'm going to keep streaming. I'm probably gonna do a little bit more supermarket. Or, um, yeah, a bit more supermarkets in the area. Yeah. And then maybe the industry. But um, we'll take a break though. Poo poo stinky. What do you mean, poo poo stinky? Oh, look, you got a bit badge. <laughs> you, you got the hunter pit badge. No more steam for today. No, all see the puzzle. That was it. There we go. <laughs> Only supermarket. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. But like I said, I'm going to take a little break. Get some more water, um, and get some food in me, and we will continue. So don't go away just yet. And the fun is still going on.
Also, Jones, if you could be so kind as to change um, the title and category. Thank you.
Hello, I am back. What is this song playing right now? Mm -hmm. Alright, let's continue. Thank you. I'll put stuff all oh, and then. Oh, right, I was putting stuff away. <laughs> I forgot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you good, Jones? What happened? Me, I fell asleep. <laughs> oh, we didn't finish. Everybody was getting tired, so we decided to stop for today. Maybe pick it up another day. Hey, great. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Jones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I miss the sunbed, miss the <laughs> All right, we don't have any potatoes. Oh, give me one second, guys.
Oh, I just realized. Uh, I didn't say anything of importance though. I was just saying I need potatoes, chicken, right? Um, below the waist, huh? Why are we blowing the wasting? Did he just say even the white kids? What? Why are we talking about below the waist? I'm very confused. What? Why are we talking about below the waist? I'm very confused. Like it. <laughs> Even the white kids. Yeah, that's what he said. Even the white kids. This the part where I say I don't wanna I did before. I'm time to see Voodoo Magic. Uh, I guess we can get some rights. All right, I need pizza, pizza, pizza. All right, then we'll be ready. I'm ready to reject people who spend less than a hundred. Sorcery, you're in. <laughs> Should I be worried? I'm about the booty about to go down in my uh chat. <laughs> yeah, Stone's gonna cast loads of money for egg game. Honestly, Lord knows I can use a lot of money right now. Oh. 
amount of honey. I am out of bleach. Why does bro need so much pepper? Weird. Yeah, these are the best we like the same. Would you even title this stream? Oh my god. Your titling is so bad, Tones. Why are you equi buffering? I know I can. Bro, are you good? Why do you have three bottles of vodka? I don't know what you think they have funny name. I'm tired and hungry, can't think of anything funny. Understandable. Why still haven't you gotten food though? Oops. Mm -hmm. Oh, dang it. I can't buy anything. I 
probably had a problem. That's why he got so many vodkas, probably. Maybe he's an alcoholic. Damn, you good, bro? <laughs> oh, but it's already ten. Right, um, I know we literally just started back up with um, markets in, but it is like very late here. I really went by so fast. <laughs> and I do need to rest up a little bit for um tomorrow stream. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, I now have 52 customers. Um, sushi, milk, cheese. Milk, sushi, um, cheese. Uh, or, oh. Uh, milk. Oh, it was eggs, I think. Not sure which one. Nope. Nope. It wasn't eggs. But I'm high. <sighs> yeah, what was it? Oh, so it is egg. You pack. Built the same. No, let's see. Okay, what? Okay, candy, chocolate, and the cakes. The. Uh... Um, so. Both cake, candy, chocolate, stuff we absolutely need right now, hot sauce, mm. Mm. Did I put the frost in it? No, I'm find out later. Mm. I'm gonna add ice cream. Mm, let's see. Mm. 
Um, sorry that I'm umming a lot. <laughs> I'm like I'm buffering a little bit. Everybody remembers this classic song. Ooh. do I need? Right, it's only chicken. Um, I can buy the egg and some beef. Uh, bleach and some handshake. Oops, I bought a whole lot of extra potatoes when I don't need it. Huh. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, Maple. Did you get some food? Just 
is this here? No. Hmm. Much chicken. That's not what I need. Potato. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, because we keep getting like repaints. Yeah, have some pizza. Good, good, good. <laughs> Maple, you should definitely like share your pizza with me. This is chicken. Give me a slice of yeah, maple. Save us a slice. <laughs> Air mail it if you have to. <laughs> Here's some in the fridge. If I wake up tomorrow, will you still be here? I don't know. If you feel the way I do, I do. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. You two can have some if you stop. <laughs> okay, time to visit you meet people and clean your house for me. <laughs> Be careful, Maple. I don't know if you feel the way I do. If you leave, I'll go find you. Please don't go, 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 go. Uh, I guess I'll take more sugar. <coughs> Sugar. Let's see it. Then sugar, then sugar. Sugar flour. Okay. Sugar flour, sugar, sugar flour. Sugar, sugar. Mm. I've never heard this one. I bet you, you heard this song before. <laughs> Apparently this is, um, a 2000s hit. 
I don't know where it was, but it definitely wasn't around me. But just a brief piece, guys, I don't normally do long streams like this. You cut two shots of Pokemon. Well, take what they gave me. Mm -hmm. Haven't heard it. Well, they got skipped. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <sighs> Alright, I have like 10k. What can I do? Mm, I can't get another license. Oh, I could theoretically grow. That'd be like all my money. Oh, I could get more storage space that I really need. I mean, technically, I don't really need more space. Product. Let me take it to 40. Yeah, 37. <laughs> This is hard. <laughs> Maybe I should have bought more. That probably be smart. Oh, yeah, I did. I found it like. A long time ago, I could like dash. Oh, my nose. Look at these people spending such a low amount of money. All these great products. Oh, bruh. Guys, I think I'm learning what it's like to be physically tight. Like, I'm like in that limbo between tired and not tired. Um, I've been playing it ever since I first saw Iron play it, and that was like over like two weeks ago or something. So yes, I would recommend it. That's only if you like management games. I recommend it if you like like management. Is this? 
It'll probably be a little bit more exciting once they like add in some other stuff. Like I personally am not looking for like expert updates. So I would highly prefer if they did include that in, but if it's gonna be like a simulator, you do have to Okay. I think I have the Steam Spring Sale. Well, I didn't buy it on sale. I mean, it's just a measly twelve dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'll remember the wanted. <laughs> I remember like. I first heard one of their songs. I'm like, is this One Direction? <laughs> oh, that was such a. Oh, somebody almost paid two hundred. I like you. <laughs> True. Like, imagine all the fun you'll have running your own store in comparison to the $12 that you're going to give up for it. <laughs> you have to think, is the amount of fun I will have worth the $12? Oh, she almost spent 200 Oh my god. I love you. Please come back. Please come back, I beg of you. But no, it was really funny. I remember seeing their music video on TV. And I was like, is this One Direction? And then when I finally like revealed the name, I was like, oh, that's not One Direction. But I mean, I also guess because like, they look nothing like the direction. It was just funny. Hmm. Action. You drive a hard bike and I buy. Right. Always buy things on the basis of how much fun you think you'll have. If you feel you'll get the value out of it. Or you feel you'll get the most fun out of it and value that are you kidding me are you kidding me get out of my fucking face bro yeah always look at it from like a fun perspective you really feel like you'll really enjoy yourself and you'll have a good time then giving up some money uh, it could be a little and be worth it you know like I know I would have fun with New Replicant which is why I'm like always itching to buy it when it goes on sale however I don't have the PC that can handle it so, unfortunately, I can't buy it. I work with gacha games. I don't recommend you do that with gacha games. In fact, I don't recommend you play gacha games. Especially if, especially if like, you know that you're, like, an impulsive buyer. Or you're very easily swayed. Like, if you just have, um, you don't have good self-control, so you don't.
What? But the hot, sexy boys and girls. Look. Unless you have a stable income where you have enough disposable income where you can just spend reckless, spend as much as you want, and then go for it. But if you don't, then just don't. Especially if, like I said, you don't have the self-control. Because some people, some people do go homeless because of it. But that's also goes into like not being able to properly manage like their finances as well. I feel like a lot of people don't know how to do that. Peanut butter candy. Is maple okay? I highly doubt it. A fifteen fifty. All right, guys. I think that is it for now. <laughs> uh, my poor brain is turning into mush. Okay, fair. It would be especially bad if the gosh I had any characters with fluffy tails and ears. No, oh, Maple. You're so easy. But yeah, like all all gotcha games are predatory. Like you may say, no, the one I play, no, it's predatory. It may not be as predatory as most, but it's still predatory. Plume was shaky. But, oh no, not the mushy brain. <laughs> but I, I do hope you guys had fun today. Like, I, I always hope everybody who comes to my streams has fun. Because I do want this to be a fun, but a safe and calming place for you to come to. Until, you know, just come and relax. After, like, on an exciting stream with somebody else, you just come here to relax and chill out. Uh, no, I'll probably still like be around. Obviously, not streaming, but I'll still be around playing games or whatever. But I fell asleep though in the bedtime story. It wasn't a bedtime story, <laughs> but I'm glad you felt comfortable enough to fall asleep. <laughs> Had lots of fun. That's good. But just to remind everybody, uh, tomorrow I will be tomorrow I will be uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but I will be building my Millennium Puzzle. I feel oddly familiar with she. <laughs> Okay, but it is kind of funny though how you and Dones were like the same as Clive and Shannon. I mean, Shannon and Clive. Wait, I agree, there's a bedtime story that make me fall asleep. Okay, then I guess it make you fall asleep. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, hmm, so they sound eerily like you do. And then Dones came out of nowhere, it's like, yeah. But the main character sounds like you. I'm like, nah. 
Nah. But I'm yet tomorrow. Puzzle building. Oh, then. Wednesday, right? Wednesday, I will continue in the speed run. We will be doing Mishka's route. Yeah, we'll be doing Mishka's route. Hopefully that'll go a lot faster than Dima. Um, and then Friday, I'll be doing stream with Dawn. Yes, a hand cam, yes. But you won't actually get to see my hands. <laughs> like, you guys will never get to see what I actually look like. I'm sorry, but that's how it's going to be. Um, and then Friday I'll be on Dawn's stream. Or as Ninja refers to him, as Giga Chad. And then Saturday I'm hoping we can do Community Day. But I do hope you all turn up for Community Day. <laughs> Elusive Ekri hand cue. Yeah, because I don't do them as often. Because again, I mean, I don't really have a reason to. Because again, I also don't have money to like buy building stuff either. I mean, I could also just do it again, like um, a Lego building thing. I just put stuff together while chatting. And Giga Chad, where? Nowhere. Until Friday. Because <laughs> I think he's still enjoying his um self-care week. Uh, and then, yeah, I think that's everything else I have planned. Oh, and also, like I said, um, I don't know if I mentioned it last night or I mentioned it on Wednesday. Wait, I don't know if I mentioned it Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, but it, my spring break is in two weeks. So it essentially starts, actually technically my spring break, okay, spring break is technically from the 25th to the 31st, but since I don't have class um, on Friday, it technically starts from Friday the 22nd. So yeah, I'll have a lot of free time. I'm hoping to um, do some collabs with people. I did start talking to someone about doing a collab. But they're being elusive as always. Where one of these days I'm going to knock something into their head. And then, um, yeah, I'll probably try to do like a lot more collabs. And, um, solo streams, obviously. <laughs> I got your hopes up. Um, no, I think you got your own hopes up. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. I don't think there's anything else I want to tell you guys. Um, other than, well, Keep to my promise about playing Princess Peach Showtime. Oh, Tones, you, you came back right as I'm starting to like end stream. <laughs> um, I was basically just updating everybody about my schedule, basically. Saying, you know, tomorrow, the puzzle, Wednesday, continuation of the speed run, Friday, stream with Dawn. Saturday, hoping to do the community day. And then saying that in two weeks I have spring break, so I'll have a lot of free time. And I'm hoping to do a lot more collabs um, with that free time.
Is there anything else I need to say? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if there's anything else to say. Oh, right. Um, I, I completely forgot, but now I won't. I will continue on working on the six month sub badge. I promise, Maple. I promise. <laughs> Um, anything else? Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Um, so yeah, thank you everybody for coming. I'm really surprised so many of you uh, stuck around for this long. I mean, it's been like an eight hours and a half. I'm pretty, I was fairly certain a lot of you would like dip, <laughs> especially when it got to like the visual novel aspect. Um, so yeah, I do hope you guys come tomorrow because I, <laughs> I really want to put this puzzle together because I finally own a piece of Yu-Gi-Oh merch. Um, did I say what time I'd start? No, I didn't. Um, I'll probably start at like 12 or something. I don't know. Oh, right. I don't know if I finished my thought, but I, I will do Princess Peach Showtime for like a consistent dreams thing. So that'll also be a thing. Okay, why are you guys fighting in my chat? Oh my god. Okay. Let's see. I don't think there's anything else, and if there is, I'll probably tell you in the Discord server. For anybody who hasn't joined, you know, mark the board. And there you go, you can go and join. Then again, I don't really promote it much, but I also have merch. It's just stickers of the leaves that I have um, that you see on screen right here. So if you want any of the leaves as stickers, uh, go ahead and go to the store. <laughs> okay, so doing my usual outro. I thank you everybody for coming. Thank you to the bottle. Watch always last. What am I doing? Um, thank you to the active chatters, the lurkers, those who stopped in to say hi, and naturally the VOD watchers as well. Your contributions matter a lot to me as well. And again, I will see you guys tomorrow. Let's see, who are we going to raid? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we got some options here. Do we want to raid Narin Das? Uh, Raid Iron Mouse, you're insane. <laughs> you're insane. Okay, do you guys? So, you have Lily, you have Vendetta, Aaron, Daz. Who do you guys want to go to? I think Daz is playing Star Rail, Naren is doing Layful Company, uh, Lily is doing Undertale. <laughs> I can't believe Pro said a raid Iron Mouse. I'm a nobody.
maybe one day when I have more viewers. But I'm guessing you guys have no preference to who you go to. And then I guess I can just send you to Narin. I haven't rated her yet. I know he, he's doing a Mega Man. Who the hell is Enya? Alright guys, enjoy your time with Madden.